The Michelin Pilot Challenge on IMSA Radio, part of the Radio Show Limited Network. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. If you're in Europe, we're at a hallowed ground, Speedway Indiana, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway should need absolutely no introduction if you have any kind of love for motorsport in any shape or form. It's played host to pretty much all of the big championships from around the world, including, of course, a less than successful recent dalliance with Formula One. It's sports cars this weekend, and the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge has the Indianapolis Motor Speedway 240, the second of two four-hour races. The circuit is 14 corners and two and uh, just under two and a half miles uh, around turn one. Option, opportunity to overtake, also at turn seven, another hard-breaking area, same turn 12. We've seen some phenomenal passes through turn 14. Cars can go side by side there as they go back out onto the circuit. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm John Hindorf. Jeremy Shaw is with me in uh, IMSA broadcast booth. Shea Adam is down on the pit lane as the cars have started to roll. Shea, let's pick up some of the uh, the storylines. And in GS, a bit like stick and ball sports as we're coming down to the clutch part of the season, it's all about the big more momentum. And that belongs firmly to Rebel Rock Racing with their Chevy Camaro as we have just two races to go for the Chevy Camaro GT4 Rebel Rock Racing. Robin Liddell and Frank DePew sitting third in the championship looking at a very real shot to take home the big honors for GS. They have drafted in an ace, a secret weapon for this four hour race and Robin Liddell has been reunited with his championship cohort, Mr. Andrew Davis. There's just something right about a Camaro with Robin and Andrew especially racing here at the Brickyard with an opportunity to send off the Camaro in the finest form possible. And as you say, still with a chance of the championship going for a, a three-peat in terms of victory. And what about TCR shares? The cars roll on to their second formation lap. TCR has been a story this year in the fact that there has been diversity amongst the ranks. We've had three wins for the Alpha team, two wins for Audi and two wins from Hyundai. But both of the Hyundai victories have come from the same car, the Audi victories. Actually, three wins for Audi because one of the Audi victories came from a different team. But it has been JDC Miller Motorsport with Unitronic on the side of that car. That has taken the momentum as of late. They've gotten pole positions. They've gotten the race wins at CTMP. And then most recently at Virginia International Raceway, they got a pole position again here today, looking to try and keep that streak alive. Shea Adams, our eyes and ears in the pits, and we'll be talking to some of the drivers and team personnel. Jeremy Shaw will be uh, with me in the Global Broadcast Centre. Um, a fairly simple uh, strategy for TCRs. They can go uh, now here uh, probably a little bit more actually so that would look to be in normal circumstances uh, three pit stops not so for GS not quite as straightforward for the GS cars uh, Jeremy no they can do around about 50 minutes or so uh, I think um, without any difficulty uh, we've seen several drivers stretch it however and uh, fuel consumption and looking after the uh, fuel consumption is certainly an issue uh, and it's proven very beneficial for some of the teams out there in particular. Let's see how the strategy plays out. The, with it being the four-hour race and having an additional driver, it is not always, Jeremy, going to be um, put your qualifying driver or put your least experienced driver into qualify and start the race and then finish with your quote-unquote closer. Um, there's a couple of different opportunities here for how that might work, particularly with the minimum driver times. It, yeah, true that, and uh, yeah, th th there's a lot more strategic options during this longer race. But um, we're lining up now, ready to go green, and that McLaren uh, it's qualified in the top uh, six three times this season, and now on the pole position. Can it transfer it into a race? Very late green flag, split start here, and the McLaren gets an absolute cracker with Jesse Lazar 
Did he jump the start? That will be the question. It will be looked at. It always is. Here come the TCRs to the line, led by Chris Miller and Harry Gottsacker. Uh, uh, Audi and Hyundai. Audi on driver's right has the inside line down into the first corner. Great flag waves. And the uh, 14 TCRs get going. The Hart Honda breaks out of line on the third row of the grid, but that was all right. It was after the start line, goes down the outside. This is a very bold move uh, from that Hart Honda. And Chad Gil yeah, the gunslinger, trying to get down the outside and make some moves. And he has made up a position there, I think, as he goes through turns one and two. That was very brave indeed. And showing a little bit of intent very early on from the heart. The heart Honda, the red, white and black machine. Meantime, there's a spinner and it's the 57. Oh, dear me. This is the windward car. Bryce Ward from seventh position. Now, did he jump or was he pushed? I think it was the number 59 car that was alongside him uh, as it went into. Yeah, that's going to be a penalty straight away, I'm afraid. Luca Mars putting the nose of the car, uh, racing uh, Core Motorsport Ford Mustang where it wasn't wanted. Uh, Bryce keeps the car moving, though, and I don't think there's that much damage on either of them. Meantime, at the front of the TCR field, my goodness, these guys realise that this is actually a four-hour race. Chris Miller had to give up first position because down the inside, Harry Gottsacker has piled in there at Turn 1 and made a cracking... Uh, sorry, no, that's Mason Felipe that's come through in the 98 car. He started uh, further back on the grid and was uh, down in fourth position the last time I looked. So there's been a big change around that as they go through. Sorry, I'll say that again. It's Michael Lewis. It's the number one car that has gone through. We'll get it right in a minute in the hordes of Hyundais down towards turn one within second position. That looks like the 33 of Harry Gottsacker in its new colours this weekend. Well, plenty going on at the start of the race, Jeremy, and we've still got three hours and 57 minutes and 22 seconds left. <laughs> Cracky, yeah, that was, that was pretty wild, wasn't it? And uh, not a good start uh, toward the front of the field in GS for the championship leader, Kenny Murillo. He uh, started, lined up in the fifth position, completed the first lap in ninth. He got muscled down several positions there in... But, uh, boy, it's tight in uh, TCR. And once again, those Hyundai is moving to the front quickly in the early stages. But Tower isn't isn't too bad here in Indianapolis, but certainly is, is often a factor for the TCR field, looking after those uh, front uh, front tyres in a front-wheel drive car. They get to work awfully hard. Battle for second is on now with the behind Jesse Lazar as they go down into the first corner the number 88 Billy Johnson driven Archangel Motorsport Aston that's the mostly green car the green and black car in behind him Stephen McAleer for Porsche and for RS1 Stephen chasing the championship here and these top three have pulled away by a couple of seconds to Austin McCusker in the Van der Stur racing Aston Martin who's got Hugh Plum for team TGM right in behind him and then there's a wee gap back to the Turner Motorsport BMW number 95, the red, the red, the uh, yellow and blue car. Uh, that car sitting in sixth position. Luca Mars under review for that touch on Bryce Ward early on on the first lap. And uh, I think we can only see that going one way, even on the first lap. Yeah, a little bit more leeway on cold tyres, but really, Luca, that was a bit of a low percentage lunge from Luca there. And side by side again for the Billy Johnson and Stephen McAleer battle. Uh, these two, yeah. these two very experienced racers, Jeremy, and this is quality stuff from them. Yeah, it is, and uh, really good, respectful driving as well between them both, giving you just, uh, just about enough room mm. to go side by side through a couple of corners. Billy Johnson and Aston Martin trying to hold off Stephen McAleer, but that Porsche got a good draft on the front straight, and Stephen nice. McAleer is going to make the move to the inside to turn one. Nice move by McAleer, and that uh, number 88 car for Archangel most would well, have all sorts of bad luck this season, but uh, Billy Johnson, he scored his uh, 24th, uh, and... Uh, 
victory in a Toyota, actually, at uh, Canadian Time yes. Sport Park a few months ago, back in the Aston Martin this weekend. And he is the most successful driver in the series history, get, get, dating back to 2001 with 24 wins and 51 top three finishes. Well, uh, Bryce Ward has made a couple of positions up, three positions up, in fact, from being bumped to the back of the field in that early skirmish. And as we suspected, Luca Mars for Core Motorsports and the Ford Mustang GT4 is going to have to come down a very long pit lane. And it is pretty much all under the pit lane speed limiter. So that is going to drop him out. That's incident responsibility for the Mustang driver early on. At IMSA Radio, if you'd like to get in touch with us here in the booth, out front, Jesse Lazar by about a second and a half. And we've had just on six minutes of this race in TCR, Michael Lewis for Brian Hurd at Autosport, leads his teammate Harry Godzacker, number one Hyundai from number 33. Uh, and then it's Brian Ortiz for Vanister Racing in the third at uh, Hyundai Elantra before Chad Gilsinger, who I said was looking a bit racy, he's pushed his way up into fourth position uh, as he is sitting behind, by about half a second behind Brian Ortiz. And that's how they stand, with Stephen McAleer having just put in the fastest lap of the race and closes into about a second away from the Mia McLaren Artura at the head of the field as the leaders are on lap five, Jeremy. They are, and uh, settling into a good pace here, and as Hugh Plum running in the fifth position in Canon 46. I said earlier, he scored his uh, 100th top 10 finish last time out, ties him for the record with Scott Maxwell, who hasn't raced in this championship now for several years, but uh, that's a pretty good milestone. There's 100 top 10 finishes, that's pretty cool. Uh, out of his uh, total, by the way, for Hugh Plum of 166 starts prior to this weekend. And remarkably, the two, t the two Team TGM Aston Martins, the combined ages of the four drivers is, is a pretty impressive 226. Uh, the number of starts they've made between them, 613. How many? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, is, is it fair to say experience then? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ted, Ted, uh, Ted Giovannis, he, he's over 100 himself in terms of starts in the championship in Canada 64. He's made 113 starts now, but uh, his co-driver, Owen Shrinkley, he's got the most starts uh, of anybody in this championship at 189 he will make when he hops aboard the car shortly. OK, thank you very much. Uh, into the pit lane for the drive-through assessed for incident responsibility and that is the number 59 Luca Mars into the pit lane so he is serving that now where's that going to bring him out you know it's going to bring him out somewhere near Bryce Ward don't you it, it just it, it just happens that that is what goes on in fact I think Bryce has gone past him actually that might put Luke, uh, Luca Mars all the way to the back he's still not out of the pit lane and everybody's gone across the I'm start. Sure he's not, I'm not sure he's just ahead of Bryce Ward, actually. It, 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 it's it's going to be tight. Yeah, I'll check the uh, I'll check the tracker and see where they've come out together. Yes, uh, he is... Uh, where's the 57? Where's the 59? Just going down the back straight now and it turns seven for Bryce. So I've got a feeling he's come out just behind it, but I'll, I'll check that out the next time they come around. Meantime... Uh, the Unitronic Liquid Molly, black, white, and yellow. That is the uh, 17 car that we're talking about, that I'm talking about, uh, in the TCR category. So, what happened there to push that car so far, so far back down the running there, Jeremy, for Chris Miller? Because he was uh, much closer to the sharp end at the start of this race. But the car's going well now. He, and yeah, that was our last, pull lap, sitter. last lap was slow. It was uh, three and a half seconds uh, off the pace last lap. So he must have had some sort of a, an incident, I think, out on the racetrack for Chris Miller in column of 17 to fall back to the ninth position in the class, the pole sitter. Interesting. Very interesting. Victor Gonzalez racing team in uh, Honda, having a good scrap with the returning Road Shagger Racing in the dark grey number 61. And it's good to see that Audi back. They're 
uh, battling for 10th and 11th. It's Gavin Ernstone who has uh, started that car, as, we're, as one would expect. Really come on the last couple of years, hasn't he? He's really enjoying his motor racing as well. Being a shame that they haven't been around uh, for a wee while. Good to have the car back. The bright orange car, by the way, just in front of Paul Sitter, uh, Chris Miller, uh, in the number 17 car. It's the 55, Goo, Goo Racing, and Eddie Goo behind the wheel of that car. What's the story there, Jeremy? Because that's a, a, a new colour scheme and a new car to the championship. Yeah, good question. I haven't been able to find out a lot about it, except for the fact uh, the two uh, have raced in, uh, in Mexico, family team. Uh, a lot of racing down south of the border. Uh, they were listed on the entry list as coming from Texas, but I'm uh, pretty sure they're from Mexico City. and done a lot of racing, a lot of uh, success down there in uh, Mexican uh, touring car racing. And they're giving a good good account of themselves here as well. They've been uh, you know, right up there in the uh, in the pack of cars. And here he is di dicing now with the guy that was on pole position just behind the two Rockwell Autosport Audis. But uh, it's been a good run, good debut for that bright orange and black car. And do, do, do we know whether this is going to be part of a, 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 a bigger a, a bigger programme next year? I'm hearing that they do want to do a full season next year. Yeah, honestly, I have no idea. I mean, not, I'm not on site, so I haven't been able to uh, to find them, so I don't know. But certainly, I mean, I'm sure it's a bucket list item for pretty much anybody to come here to race in Indianapolis. But uh, uh, and you know, they, as I say, giving a good account of themselves. This is uh, looking to the inside, in fact, and diving past very uh, incisively at turn one goes uh, Eddie Goo in that number 55 car and and uh, Chris Miller there is uh, got his hands full uh, certainly has as they're fighting through uh, let's go down to Shear while the early battles are going on gives us an opportunity to speak to some of the drivers who are watching intently as we are Shear where are you in the pit lane with the Unitronic JDC because I was curious as to why the pole sitting car is dropping down the field so much. Mikey Taylor, the day started off really well for you guys. What's Chris dealing with right now out on the racetrack? Yeah, he hasn't said much. I mean, you know, we're now in a kind of a, a compromised position, but the car is still fast and, and, you know, we still have a bunch of pace left in us. I guess we'll just find our feet and we'll be up there. Normally in the races, we don't see rear tire changes with the four hour contest in a track that's not particularly abrasive to the Michelins. So you got to put new rears on. I think you'll have to. I mean, I don't think you'll be able to make four hours necessarily with the rears plus qualifying. I'm sure people are changing at least once, maybe more than that. So, but we'll see with the, with the temperatures as well. How much of the race are you planning to drive? Well, I'll be in at the end and probably about halfway. Um, we'll see how strategy goes. Chris has been super fast this weekend, so I don't mind if he does some more work. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Fastest lap in TCR early on has gone to Harry Gottsacker in the number 33, and that is a 133.014. And a close call. Uh, a moment or two ago for Jensen Altman, who uh, got towards the back of the... That would have been the Nola Sport car, I think, right ahead of him, uh, as uh, he had to just pull out of that one, and it allowed Alfredo Najri to go through. I know it was the accelerating performance Porsche of Moise Oretsky that he was close to the back of, but uh, Jensen has uh, managed to regain his position as goes back towards the scene of the incident last time around which was at turn one four hours we had on the clock we've had 15 minutes and here is how they stand in this early running jesse lazar from pole position for mia motorsport in action mclaren by about three quarters of a second stephen mcalea has the fastest lap of the gs racing in 130 364 in second place for the rs1 porsche the number 28 car then billy johnson for archangel motorsports aston the number 88 car is about four seconds ahead of Austin McCusker in the Van der Stur Aston Martin. And three Aston Martins in the top five with Hugh Plum in the number 46 team, TGM, another 1.6 seconds further back. Down towards turn one, Hyundai on Hyundai action uh, as the Van der Stur racing number 91 car in second position is in a battle with Mason Felipe. And Felipe goes 
inside, outside, turn one, turn two, and takes that position. And here's how the TCR car stand. There's about half a second between Michael Lewis and Harry Godzak. And Mr. Felipe now up into third. So it's Hyundai's one, 33 and 98. Then Brian Ortiz uh, in the fourth uh, of the Hyundais, but that is the blue and white car. First non Hyundai, Chad Gilsinger down in uh, fifth position for Hart. It's a further four seconds uh, further back with Eric uh, Rockwell in sixth position for the Audi number 15, and that's how it stands. With 15 minutes gone, the leader on lap number uh, 10 and with a three quarters of a second lead, Jesse Lazar uh, here at the IMSA Mission of Pilot Challenge in the four hour contest. Settling down a little bit after a rather fraught start, Mr. Shaw. Now we can get to see the relative paces of the cars and drivers. Yeah, the top two certainly have separated themselves uh, from uh, the rest of the field. We uh, kind of saw that uh, it, well in qualifying, Jesse Lazare uh, had uh, four tenths of a second or more on uh, Stephen McAleer and qualified second who in turn was about six tenths ahead of the third fastest car that was Billy Johnson and that has been that uh, pace uh, has been translated into the race I mean similar uh, deficits now because the third place car is on his own Billy Johnson he's pulled away about uh, three seconds from Austin McCuskey doing a nice job for Van der Stur racing in fourth and then Hugh Plum just ahead of Sean McAllister and Cameron Lawrence and that battle for fifth, sixth and seventh and uh, meanwhile in uh, the, the head of the field in TCR well, they're still close together there's two uh, oops brown herder cars oops. Uh, and a problem for Ted Giovannis there uh, in the 64 as he was uh, I think being passed by some of the TCR cars there and that has caused an incident down at turn one two it is the Roy Block KMW Motorsports Alpha involved there Victor Gonzalez racing car I think was involved in that as well the number 99 and that was uh, as they were coming past Ted uh, going through it's Ted sitting at the back of the G S field at the moment as Stephen Magalia has gone through into the lead Magalia yeah, because into I, the lead. I think Jesse Lazare had to take some ev evasive action down there to get to to negotiate that uh, Aaron Aston Martin, um, as he uh, and and all the the uh, the Alpha that was re regaining its position. But yeah, that was uh, a little bit unnecessary. Well, that that was the I think it was the Honda, the VGRT Honda that was in the middle of that. Certainly, there was a touch on the Giovannis. Ted Giovanni's car, Ted just went on the grass, but then... Oh, yeah, but he was, he was going half the speed of the other two. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was trying. The pilot. Yeah, and, uh, but, but then there was definitely a bump between the Honda and the Alpha, which turned the Alpha round, so that will be getting looked at as well. So that's the numbers 5 and 99 car, and indeed that is under review at the moment. Nice piece of driving by Stephen McAleer, and he's pulled out a second and a half already, and a problem for the Toyota Supra as that has come to a halt that's at turn 12 he's run on at turn 12 and it's not that easy to get back on the track there if you're facing the wrong direction not as as uh, easy as at turn one and into the pit lane for Gollum, uh, for Brady Gollan in the car barn with Peregrine Porsche with smoke pouring from the right hand side of that car it looks like a tyre rub there and he's had contact because the door mirror is folded in on the right hand side as well Shea Adam is in the pit lane I don't like the look of the camber from the right front wheel, although the smoke was pouring out of the right rear wheel. The car has come to a stop. Mechanics are coming over the wall now with sticker Michelins as it is drizzling down here on the pit lane. Of course it is. I'm not in my rain jacket anywhere in sight. Uh, they're going to change four Michelin tires just to make sure this is going to be a bit of a lengthy stop for the car bond with Peregrine Racing Porsche. And that was contact between the Supra and that uh, car bomb by Peregrine Machine, Alfredo Najri behind the RV Motorsports Toyota steering wheel. And both of those cars have had a bit of grief. Alfredo pulling off straight away and then trying to get back onto the track. And again, coming from a long way back, 
I'm not sure that's going to be looked on favourably. Uh, both of them overran the corner. And the RV car now into the pit lane. And spits and spots of rain beginning to fall at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This wasn't in the script. Weather being involved was not in the script here, Jeremy. Oh, I didn't see that line, certainly. No, that's uh, because, uh, Yesterday was absolutely picture perfect. But hey, look, this is Indianapolis. Uh, and this time of year, it, it has been home to rain, let's face it. Uh, well, it rains any time of year in Indianapolis. Um, and probably when you least expect it, or at least hope for it. But uh, yeah, that's a, a big tire up there for that uh, that car barn Porsche. And that car running two different cars here this weekend for the first time. The sister car is now a BMW. Um, well, it's the first time they've run two cars for uh, for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, but uh, good to see that team expanding. And, of course, for, for Steve Dynan, who's got a long, long history with BMWs. He's one yeah. of the most successful BMW tunes for many, many years. Uh, and uh, good to see that relationship renewed again. Here's a spin, though, for uh, Hugh Plum, Plum who's running, who was running in the fifth position and dicing with the other car barn car, Sean McAllister. Yeah. Uh, had dropped down to sixth position just before the incident and he's waiting now for a gap in traffic should say that the car bomb Porsche has come back in again for a second time the right rear as she suggested uh, not sitting correctly and that car is going to go behind the wall uh, and incident responsibility incident responsibility for one of those incidents, uh, which one is that? Oh, it's for the RV Motorsport Supra uh, with the 93 Carbon car. Although, interestingly, uh, no action for the 99 Honda on the Alpha, um, which looked very similar to me. Well, but, okay. Yeah, but there were, there were other cars involved in that one. They weren't, weren't there here and there. This one, it was just, just the two of them getting together out on the racetrack and one trying to pass the other in a position where it's awfully difficult to pass. It's going to be a drive-through for that Ave Motorsport Alfredo Nagery Toyota Supra with the GR Supra. Uh, he's got three laps, three times past pit lane before he has to come in at IMSA Radio. Uh, now, did that car, actually that car came into the pit lane, so Alfredo's in the pit lane, uh, as is Brent Golan. So, I think that car's gone behind the wall as well, actually. She's just telling me that it's not sitting in the pit lane, although the 93 car is. Uh, some windscreen wipers starting to be fired up now by the leading TCR cars. So, another little flurry of excitement there as Stephen McAleer mm. into the lead of the race a couple of three laps ago has now pulled out two seconds in that rather distinctive dark grey and bright green RS1 Porsche looking for a championship this year and really exciting Stephen it's really I mean he's he's been around for a long time now Jeremy but it's uh, it's really focused his energies again and given him a new a new lease on his driving career really well yeah I mean you know, he's, he's a really talented guy he's driving all sorts of cars all over the place is Stephen McAleer and drives all of them extremely well so it's good to see him the Porsche has been struggling for much of the season but um, they're looking good here this weekend and uh, taking full advantage of it is, is Stephen McAleer and you know, interesting to look at the lap times 131.5 last time around so these spots of rain aren't slowing the, these cars down at all uh, Cameron Lawrence is going to get a drive through it was he who drove into uh, Hugh Plum and spun him around so that is going to be a drive through as well and at this stage with still everybody fairly close together it's going to drop them a long way down through the order. Hugh Plum's dropped down to 20th after that spin, just ahead of Luca Mars, uh, who has done a drive through himself. Bryce Ward, by the way, has fought his way back up to 16th in GS after being unceremoniously ushered off the circuit uh, in the early running of lap one. So Bryce, uh, with his dander up, uh, it would appear, uh, and driving very nicely indeed, and was fully eight tenths of a second quicker than Kyle Washington last time around, and he's closed into within half a second of getting back into the top 15. Well done to Bryce. He's uh, he's taken that, got himself yep. pointed in the right direction, and he's 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 uh, he's focused focused that frustration in absolutely the right way. 
He has, and you know, after his best ever qualifying run yesterday uh, to put this car seventh on the grid, that was a really good effort by uh, by Bryce. So he'd be really disappointed to have been turfed out there and uh, put uh, rather you know, almost to, to the back of the field. But as you say, he come back really, really strongly. And all these various incidents that have taken place now in the uh, well, up and down the field uh, have uh, number one spaced things out, but number two given people that started farther back opportunity to move forward. I mean, one of the big gainers here, Vid Barletta, in the car that currently runs second in the championship, he'll be sharing number 96 turn the most for BMW with uh, Robbie Foley. He started in the 20th position, and Vin is now in uh, 13th. Uh, and Jake Peterson, who started uh, just uh, just ahead of him, is ahead of him on the road still. So it's, you know, you've got to keep your nose clean to get a good result. Uh, you have that. You have that. This race will run into the darkness. There are some lights here, but do not expect this to be lit like a super speedway. If you weren't with us for the uh, coverage last night, uh, it is more like standard street lights, particularly down the front straights, and a few pools of light around. Deliberately so, by the way. And uh, the headlights do make a difference around here. Still the rain just refusing to go away, but the lap times are holding up pretty well, Jeremy. They are. 131.4 last time around for Stephen McAleer. I mean, that's his consistent pace. He's been running uh, most of the way through this race, so uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing him down at all. He's pulled out now quite a bit to pull out more than a second on the last lap over Jesse Lazare, who uh, certainly thr throttled back for some reason. Not sure whether that was traffic or what, but Jesse all of a sudden is nearly five seconds behind the race leader. Uh, and uh, he himself has pulled away from Billy Johnson. So maybe these conditions are becoming a little bit more tricky, but particularly for some of the drivers, not so much for others. A little bit of uh, spots of rain on the windscreen. And what you've got to do is, is trust the Michelin tyres here. Up to temperature now. By no means are we anywhere near needing to put rain tyres on but you've got rain beading on the windscreens of the car. Number 33 is Harry Gottsacker. Uh, he's got a wiper going, just the left-hand side wiper connected on the TCR cars because he hasn't got a passenger who needs to see forward. Actually, I'm not sure he needs that wiper on because they've done the treatment on the windscreen very well indeed. And uh, his teammate, the number one, Michael Lewis, leading the TCR, has not got his wiper on. It's beading, it's running up over the top. What you've got to keep telling yourself is, what am I feeling? What am I feeling from the front tyres and the back tyres? Is the grip still there? Because if the grip's still there, then you ignore the rain. It's, it's when you feel the car acting differently at various parts of the circuit, Jeremy, that's when you've got to modify your driving style. Now, that's easy for us to say, in the comfort and uh, dry conditions of the, the commentary booth, but you have got to get your head around this because at the moment this is almost psychological mental rain, isn't it? Very true, I mean, very true indeed, and uh, you've just got to uh, blank it out and feel how much the grip there is uh, that the track is giving you and uh, and take the most uh, make the most use of it. Stephen McAleer, hey, look, he's from Scotland, as if he hasn't driven in the wet before. Uh, and uh, look, he, he's pulling away at the front of the field. The last lap around was a little bit slower, so certainly this uh, precipitation is having a bit more of an effect now than it was a couple of laps ago. 132.4 last time around for our race leader, Stephen McAleer, but even with that, he pulled away another second from Jesse Lazare in that uh, Motorsports in Action McLaren. Just uh, a note about the number 33 car with the handprints on it. Uh, this is a great initiative share Adam from Hyundai this is the car that we talk about uh, about this uh, charity initiative but actually all of the Hyundais are counting towards the fundraising effort explain please what's going on is the racing for children it's to try and find a cure for childhood cancer they are donating $100 for every lap that any Hyundai in the
the field leads. Michael Lewis took the lead of this race 18 laps ago, meaning so far they have raised 1800 about to be $1,900 for this organization. We are, what, half an hour into this race? There's a lot more money to be raised yet. And into the pit lane has just come an Audi. It's road checker racing. They're back with us for the first time in a little while. Gavin Ernstone, Gavin Morley, and John. No, John Morley and Gavin Ernstone. I knew I was going to get it right. I second guessed myself. You've Car got my in. They have put the hood up. Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, they put the hood up. They have had electronic gremlins on this car in the past, namely at uh, Watkins Glen most recently. It had something to do with the onboard camera. Now, they fired it back up. They're going to see if they can send Gavin back out. But they were the first team that I spotted on the entire pit lane to put wet weather tires up on the wall. Now, Audi, with this TCR car in particular, that should be pretty good in mixed conditions. It's not mixed conditions, though. It's still dry. Very dry indeed. Thank you, Shea. What a great initiative it is from Hyundai. Well done to them. Racing for children has been around this sport for a very long time. Uh, the very distinctive handprint design on that number 33. And uh, Hyundai chipping in $100 for each lap led by any Hyundai in its class. And so now we are up to will be up to $2,000 when Michael Lewis crosses the line this time around. Thank you very much indeed. A little bit of a drift from Michael Lewis as he breaks and turns into turn number 12. Now through 13 and heading towards the end of the lap. So it is just starting to get a little slicker lap times holding up pretty well though Jeremy in fairness it was a 33-2 last time around for Michael Lewis against the best time for that car of a 33 flat and at the front of the field 131-4 for Stephen McAleer who's eased himself into a six and a half second lead interesting isn't it and uh, he's just uh, I mean last lap around for the race leader back in the 31s mid 31s 131.4 for McAleer, just crossed the line again there, 131.5, so really good, consistent pace from the Scotsman here, Stephen McAleer doing a really, really nice job uh, in that uh, CBW Porsche. The uh, RS1 team, they've won championships before, they know how to get championships won, they've had, they had to, it's a bad luck in the first race of the season, they were fast at Daytona, but there was one of the cars that uh, was out early, scored minimal points there, but worked their way back into, up into fifth position in the points. They're actually tied on points coming to this weekend with the number 83 similar Porsche of BGB, Tom Collingwood and Spencer Pompelli. But uh, the, the edge on a tiebreaker, even at this stage, goes to Stephen McAleer and Eric Filgueras due to the fact they have two second place finishes to the one second place finish, which came in the first race of the season for Tom Collingwood and Spencer Pompelli. Apologies, I think I turned the Victor Gonzalez racing car back to a Honda from the Hyundai that it is now uh, a little earlier on. Thank you, Corrine, for that. Road Shagger Racing have gone behind the wall and we've got one of the Rockwell Auto Development cars. The number 10, Preston Brown, driving that car and he's moving very, very slowly indeed. Um, effectively at the early part of the lap. He's got through turn three and pulled up on turn uh, on the driver's right. Now this, I think he's gonna start a pit panic. Uh, people starting to dive in the pit lane. We're coming on half an hour. If, you're G if you are a GS car, you more than halfway through your stint here. And if that car doesn't restart, uh, then it will be a full course yellow and the safety car. Now, this could be an important pass then in that case. N through goes the 95 BMW, passing the Cameron Lawrence racing car, the 43, and goes through. Behind that, there's the Mustang. So that's the 95, and still no movement from that number 10 car, Preston Brown. And what happened to that car, I can't tell you just pulled off yeah yeah clear some sort of a problem there for that uh, one of the two rockwell autosport development cars the other car uh, is uh, eric rockwell he's running in seventh position and full uh, course yellow uh -oh. 
Full course yellow as Preston Brown is listed as resuming just as the full course yellow came out. Uh, exactly as the script would describe. Three cars came into the pit lane. Shea Adam watched the ball. Who were they and what service did they get? Both of the TGM Aston Martins have been down the pit lane. It was fuel only for the 64 Ted Giovannis. And for the sister car, the 46, fuel, and because the full course caution is out, they're doing tires. Also making it in before the yellows flew was the accelerating performance Porsche. That one will still be Moise Uretsky when it goes back out, but they took their time putting the fuel in, and then when they saw the yellow flags, they went, yeah, let's throw some new Michelins at it too. Four tires for the Porsche. Hello to Carl Whitmer, who's tweeted in at IMSA Radio, studying the field. Uh, thank you very much indeed for the kind words. I'll be back on the grid in 2024 for a full season driving a Honda FL5. Now, is, is that a bit of an exclusive, Carl? Come on, stop teasing us. You've got to tell us with whom and what the situation is. If, you're, if you've got your deal linked in for 2024, thank you very much. Uh, and best wishes to you and to all of the Whitmer family. Thanks, Carl, for being tuned in. And hello to those of you who have been watching the 24 hours of Barcelona with uh, uh, RSL team. Coverage of that is just pausing for the overnight sessions. And so many of you popping in to see us at just after 10 o'clock in the evening in the UK, just after 11 o'clock in Central European summer time. It's been a very interesting first uh, 30 minutes or thereabouts, 36 minutes. We're into a first full course yellow for the Rockwell Auckland Developments number 10 Audi in the TCR class, driven by Preston Brown. That car coasted to a halt at the start of the lap, just out of turn three on driver's right. That's getting recovered at the moment. Here's how it stands. Stephen McAleer. Uh, had eased out to around about a six second lead before the safety car intervened. The RS1 Porsche took the lead uh, four or five, a bit more than that, five or six laps ago, having uh, hunted down the Mia McLaren, the motorsport in action McLaren. So it's uh, RS1 Porsche from number 69, Mia McLaren from Archangels, Aston Martin and Billy Johnson, the 88 car in third. Fourth car barn with Porygon's BMW, first time the field of that car. Sean McAllister behind the wheel. Austin McCusker, shall I do that again? Austin McCusker, got Mac McAllister, McAleer and McCusker all in the top five. Uh, <laughs> Van der Stur Racing's Aston Martin in fifth position. Uh, then it's Murillo Racing in Kenny Murillo's number 72, AMG GT4. Porsche for Nola Sport and Adam Adelson in seventh for the number 47, Garrett Adams. Number 26, Fast Track Racing BMW. Sort of stealth their way up into eighth place. Nicely done for them. Jensen Altman has also moved up as well, the 13. But could be McAleer Racing Ford Mustang. The top 10 made up by the Reardon Racing Porsche of Jake Pedersen uh, in 10th position. That's the number 21. In TCR, Michael Lewis and Harry Gottsack are the two TCR Hyundai's from Brian Hurt and Motorsport, the number one and 33 are first and second. Mason Felipe, also Brian Hurt and Motorsport, also in an Elantra. It's the 98 car in third. Van der Stur Racing and another Hyundai, the 91 car, Brian Ortiz, in fourth place. Chad Gilsinger for the Hart FK7 Honda. It's the older version, the red, white and black number 89 is in third. Chris Miller in fourth for the Paul Sydney Unitronic GDC. That's a drive back there for Chris Miller, who dropped a few places after being turned around uh, earlier on. Top 10 in TCR made up by Cabot Bingham uh, in the, sorry, excuse me, missed out Chris Miller for Unitronic in 17th, we, uh, in the 17th car we mentioned in sixth, Eric Rockwell in seventh for the other Rockwell Auto Sport Development uh, Audi, the number 15 car, then Cabot Bingham in the number 74, the Dallas Motorsports car, then the Goo Racing car, the bright orange 55 for Audi, and Victor Gonzalez Racing's Hun has some of the same letters as Honda, but not all of them. Uh, and that is in 10th position for the number 99 car. That's how they stand. We are 40 minutes yeah. into the race and behind the safety car. Indeed, and uh, that decision to come onto pit lane by number 46 and 44 did not work out in their favour because they were too far back 
uh, or they were far enough back from the leader that when they came out of the pits, they went a lap down. Ah. So uh, the, 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 the other TGM car, the 64 car, that was already a lap down. So that's now at least two laps down. Uh, the uh, number 46 car having, excuse me, the 64 car with Ted Giovannis. Is he still aboard that car at the moment? Yes, he is, because minimum yeah, drive yeah. time hasn't been met yet, it but it will exactly, be. But he's, it he's will now be. Three laps. He's now three laps down, I think. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, bad news for uh, Owen Trinkler. Uh, and it, but number 44 and number 46 are both a lap down to the leaders. So that did not work out well for them. Uh, Good idea, but uh, hasn't panned out. I mean, they will get that lap back when all the other leaders do make their pit stops, when the pits are finally opened. But um, they're, they're still going to be at the back of the pack. Hello to the big squish. First time camping for a race, uh, and they've got the small tent. Uh, and uh, what's that? Is, that? is that a Crown Vic? You could camp in a Crown Vic. That's very impressive. Very impressive indeed. Uh, seeing and uh, everybody here friendly, and I hope to come back next year at IMSA Radio. Thank you. Safety car is in elegant isolation as. Uh, we have everybody come, who has a pit coming into the pits, and Shea Adam is taking a deep breath to describe the pit stops. Woo, head on a swivel. All right, we've got a driver change for Vanderster racing in there. Aston Martin, it is Austin McCusker out. It looks like Roy Vanderster taking over from the Milton for the number 96 turn of motorsport BMW, second in the championship. Robbie Foley taking over for Vin Barletta, whose day is now done. The sister car, the 95, is also coming in. No driver change here yet, though, so it is still Cameron Lawrence. Not yet handing over to Rob McGuinness. The number 13, McCombie McAleer Mustang, is into the pit lane. Chad McCombie is taking over for this Middleston. That was the sound of the Chevy Camaro while we're sticking with American Muscle Land. It's Frank DePew's job done. Time for Andrew Davis to get his glory time with Rebel Rocks Camaro, the number 71. It was Stephen Backley who brought in the leading car. That was the number 28 RS1 Porsche. He has handed over to Eric Fulgaris for this middle stint of the race. We've also had a driver change with the number 69, Mia McLaren. Alex Filsinger now behind the wheel. Jesse Lazare having been relieved of his driving duties. Very slow driver change for the 69. Has popped up several positions on the pit lane. Being jumped, including by Windward Racing, well back up the charts after a very good pit stop for the Mercedes crew. And breathe, Shea. Well done. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just another note, by the way, that we, we, we did, what, a couple of laps there in the course before the pits were opened. And number 71 car, that's another big gainer here, by the way, with the time of this caution yes. period, because he was about to be lapped, it was Frank Depew. Uh, and when that caution came back, that enabled him to uh, pull around to the uh, back of the pack. So big, big, big break for that team in particular, because we know how fast uh, Robin Liddell is. Uh, and uh, that Camaro is fantastically fast as well. So. Uh, that's going to be a, uh, that car is now right there in contention, might be towards, it's a, towards the back of the pack, but uh, very, very, very much in contention. I and presume it was Andre went, Davis that got into that car there, wasn't it, uh, at that? I presume so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And and also, good point, yeah, because uh, that's right, third driver this weekend. Uh, the um, uh, For those of you who, who may be not familiar with the Mission Pilot Challenge, before we went, before the pits were opened, we had some cars going past the safety car and running around to the back of the pack. Those were the TCR cars that had not been lapped by the TCR leader. So they were able to, because they were still on the lead lap with their in their, in their specific race in TCR, they went past the safety car, came back to the back of the pack, then we opened the pits for the first round of stops, which are GS cars, and now, one lap later, all the TCR cars make their pit stops as well. And Shea Adam is watching a lot of front tyres being changed. A lot of front tyres being changed, not a lot of drivers being changed. Fuel and front tyres for all three of the Brian Herta Autosports Hyundais. We've got fuel and tyres for uh, Chris Miller staying aboard the Unitronic JDC Audi. Both of the Daily cars are in. They are getting fuel and front tyres. We've got the Vandersture Hyundai. That thing's been running well so far today. Fuel and front tyres only. But it is Hart that is the biggest winner. I think they did fuel only for their Honda. They are the second car back off the pit lane. And the car that came in from the lead being the number one is now going to drop into i think sixth place leaving the pits meanwhile the unitronic audi made up a lot of positions the alfa romeo with a two tire stop as well i thought they might have gone for four and they have left roy block behind the wheel of the number five 
it's going to be a penalty for the number 33 Hyundai. The fuel hose didn't come out cleanly and the car started rolling with it still attached. Harry Gotzak, not really his fault. He would have been given the go signal there uh, because the hose was being pulled out. It didn't come out and that just slight little bit of a fumble will mean they will be back down pit lane once we go back to green flag racing and that will be costly in terms of their track position but with still uh, three hours and 15 minutes remaining there's plenty of time for them to regain the uh, positions I'm just working out where people are going to be at the end uh, of this Jeremy because of the staggered pit lane we've got the number 27 Aston Martin in and that car oh, there's something not right with that car it's rolling whilst they've got the hose in they haven't got the wheels going so this is uh, less than stunning pit stop there I'm afraid and the air guns go on to the five stood wheels on that number 27 Aston Martin for Lone Star Racing Anton Diaz Pereira is out of the car that uh, Mercedes excuse me not an Aston Martin uh, Jeremy doing double duty this weekend is Anton Diaz Pereira and uh, Scott Andrews uh, to making their debut in the Inter World Tech Sports Car Championship, which is the, the debut for Anton Diaz Pereira. And Anton obviously missed the call to come in on the previous lap because he did one extra lap but in GS uh, than everybody else. So he's going to go right to the back of the pack now. That's a, a miscue, I think, for them. Uh, they uh, lost a bit of track position. That was another car that was right at the back, uh, not quite a lap down uh, like the Camaro when the caution period came uh, out. So Am I right in thinking that Victor Gonzalez in the Hyundai hasn't stopped yeah. and therefore Correct. leads the motor race until we do the GS wave, yeah. the GS reset? That's right, which is happening right now. The car oh, okay. split, so the GS right. cars will move ahead of Victor Gonzalez. Yes, but you're right, he, he didn't come in either uh, for some reason uh, because he's yeah most of the way through a fuel stint. So uh, it's not the... Uh, so the lap led the, by a Hyundai, though. That's another uh, hundred dollars. Overall, well, overall, that, that, yeah. that, to overall get double that, for that. Do you get, oh, I would hope so, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Add a note on for leading overall. Thousand dollars for leading overall. But big shuffle round though in the uh, in the GS pack after that. I mean, Nolan Siegel all of a sudden finds himself in second position in that number 39 carbon BMW for the first time, having taken over after a really really good first stint, by the way, uh, from. Uh, Sean McAllister who's worked his way up nicely and not, not too long before we went yellow he got past number 19 car of uh, Austin McCusker it was we started wasn't it so he was up into fourth position before the full course caution was that number 39 car where well, he's now going to be in second position at the restart uh, Kenny Murillo also a really good uh, recovery by that team a good pit stop there he vaults from where was he? he was up to up to six with the various other incidents before the caution. He'll be up into third place for the restart, ahead of Van der Stur, taking over from Austin McCusker, number 19, Aston Martin. Adam Adelson has a good run. Mm -hmm. And then Daniel Morad, uh, as uh, Shea was saying, a really good pit stop for Windward Racing after the early drama for Bryce. Daniel Morad now right up there in seventh position with a very, very fast car, uh. just ahead of Alex Filsinger in the MIA McLaren. Yeah, the Mayor McLaren sitting in eighth, uh, seventh position, excuse me. Uh, and she, Adam, uh, mention of one of those drivers' names and all of a sudden she pops up with with said driver. Which one are you with, she? Sean McAllister out of that BMW because, Sean, you've got a lot of experience in Porsches, but now with Carbon with Peregrine Racing changing to the BMW, what is it about this car that seems to agree with your driving style? Well, it's just different, and we've been working on, like, Accommodating every single driving style possible just to make sure that you're like ready for anything, anything that I jump into. Um, and honestly, this car is just feeling really good right now. I was uh, able to outbreak a lot of the cars out there, so uh, that's where I was getting, gaining a lot of the advantage was into the brake zones like turn one, turn seven, stuff like that. So, yeah.
It's a good thing when you reunite Steve Dynan with BMWs too. Has he been able to bring any tricks out of the bag to try and make the car better? Oh yeah, definitely. The car at first was like, it was good right out of the box, but it was uh, after uh, Steve touched the car, it's been a lot, a lot better. You know, Steve Dynan on a BMW is dangerous. Um, but yeah, uh, we've got a lot of work post-season to get the car prepared even more. So we can't wait for that. Good luck for the rest of today. Thank you. Perfect timing from Cher as we come back to green with three hours and 10 minutes to go. And across the line for Eric Fogueras in the Porsche number 28. As he goes through down towards the first corner, all the battles are behind him. Nolan Siegel under attack there in the BMW. And in fact, it's Kenny Marillo who goes through in the orange and blue AMG Mercedes GT4. Rory Bandister as well in the Aston Martin from uh, I think that was Daniel Morad actually who's come through as well yes it was in the number 57 Winwood Racing hey that's been a good turnaround from them with Bryce Ward off in the grass on the first lap and now challenging for top five position as that car carves its way back through with Daniel Morad going for third position as he takes two round the outside. What an outstanding restart for Daniel Morad and for Winwood Racing, Jeremy Shaw. That is top draw stuff from Daniel. Yeah, I mean, he's a class act, isn't he, Daniel? I mean, that was a great restart there. Uh, well up to speed right away. Super confident driver. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, factory blessed drivers and uh, showing exactly why there. He's had success, of course, here at the past at the Speedway. He's won, he's won the sports car races in the last couple of years, but he also won a Formula BMW back in the Formula One days, back in 2007. He won one of the races here. So he knows what it's like to win a race in Ginapis and wants to do the same again here this afternoon. He's putting himself in a really good position. Interestingly, the, uh, the number 99 car uh, is still shown as the overall yeah. leader. Yeah. yeah that, that car didn't hit. Um, and... I'm just trying to figure out why it's so far ahead. Did it's he take nearly the wave round or did it's nearly it's a, a it's full, a full lap. lap ahead? Yeah, it's a full lap ahead. Yeah, correct. Um, of the other TCR cars, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out why it's, it's annoying. I can't. I, yeah, I, I think don't it's know. because I think it's because everybody went into the pit lane behind uh, before the safety car. So the pit, the, if you remember, the, the safety car was on its own and it came through um, and didn't pit. And I've got a feeling that the safety car then picked up the GS cars rather than the Gonzalez Hyundai. But I have to say, I, I didn't see that car sitting behind the safety car. Now, I was doing a lot no. of other things at the same time. So, you know, if I missed it, I apologize. But that's why I said, um, is it? Because I was kind of thinking, well, why is it not sitting behind the safety car? I think it had gone through um, and and basically not being picked up. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a moment because we've got a car off the track and it's not just any car. It is the Hyundai number 74 sitting in ninth position in the class for Daily Motorsports, the Hyundai that is driven by Jordan Wisely. And that's... Uh, Grey, black, yellow, and blue. Very striking sort of cartoonish, broken up, uh, almost uh, sort of uh, camo, urban camo sort of uh, livery. And I think they were in close proximity to the road shagger car. There was the contact between those two cars. No, there was not. It was just the rear tyres were not up to temperature from the, actually it was the Rockwell Auto Development car that was sitting uh, right with them. So, just a little mistake there for Jordan in that number 74. No harm, no foul. Didn't hit anything hard. Uh, hi to all of you uh, in the UK who, who, and to Europe who are joining us this Saturday evening. I had to think about that myself. Robert Bester has tuned in, hoping he can last till the end. Oh, come on, Robert. It's only two, half past one in the morning. And then there's... Uh, Supercars from Sandown, the long race starts early in the morning. Might as well stay up at that point. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, 
sleep later in the weekend. Too much going on for sleep this weekend. Uh, we have just come up to 55 minutes, so not quite the hour mark, but remember we've had a safety car, so that's rather shook up the pit lane, fastest pit lane uh, strategy. Daniel Morad's just put the new fastest lap of the race in, and he's charged towards the front of the field, and it's now just two seconds, Jeremy, behind Eric Fogueras for RS1 and the Porsche, the number 28 car that leads GS at the moment. Yeah, he's charging along, isn't he, uh, Daniel Morad, certainly, and uh, a great restart and good, really, really good pace from that car. So a new fastest lap of the race, and uh, Nolan Siegel there settled in behind Rory van der Stur into the uh, sixth position with the Victor Gonzalez TCR car having not yet made a pit stop uh, out in front. And um, ah. it's he won. Victor Gonzalez race team have come in from the lead of the race. And yeah, well, they, 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 yeah, okay. I, 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 I mean, he's three quarters of a lap up on the rest of the field, isn't he? So he's just completed lap 33. So where is the 28 car? 28 car just coming through to turn 12 and 13 now. Shea Adam, uh, that is... Oh, penalty box. Right, this is an improper wave vibe, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, three minutes and eight it. seconds. So there's the answer. There is the answer. Took the wave by when he shouldn't have done and therefore is going to be parked for what is effectively two minutes. Uh, uh, two laps, excuse me. Three minutes and eight seconds. A costly mistake, Jeremy Shaw, for the man with his name literally above the door there, Victor Gonzalez. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to figure out what yeah, could have happened too. there and he must have uh, uh, taken that wave around uh, when, it, when, when it wasn't his turn to do so. But some good battling here between... Uh, the Porsche, that's the Nola Sport car with, uh, is it Elliot Skier aboard that car now? Adam Adamson. In... Oh, it's still Adam Adamson. Okay, yeah. fine. He's, he's stayed with that car. That's fine. Doing a double stint in his Adam. Again, he had another really good first stint. Uh, and just going past there is Kenton Cook, who has taken over from Paul Sparta in that green and white random vandals BMW. Yeah. That car is fast again. He, he had a little bit of problem, Kenton, when he came out the pits. The driver's door wasn't closed. Had to take a that's right. couple of turns to get that close. Robbie Forley in there as well for Turner Motorsport. They're all having a cracking battle and sitting in behind them, Chad McCombie now has taken over from Jensen Oldsman in the number 13 Ford Mustang. So that is the battle for effectively 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. Actually, make that and 12th because the Stephen Cameron Racing BMW is not too far away there either in the number 43 car with uh, Gregory Leofug uh, in that machine. And it's a two-second gap back to Todd Coleman for Archangels Motorsport. So plenty of battles going on down through the field as Eric Felgueras leads again for the Porsche and for RS1 with two and a half seconds on Daniel Morad. He was still putting in the quick laps, took a tenth out of the leader last time around. Yeah, and... Uh, it may yeah, tenth of a second by him, but uh, behind him, Kenny Murillo just turned, hit, turned his best lap of the race in number 72, running in third position and uh, making that place his own because he's edged away from uh, Rory van der Stur, who also set his best lap on that last lap. Uh, and then a bit of a gap back to uh, uh, Nolan Siegel and Cameron Lawrence, and then just a yeah. little bit far, farther behind them is this super battle for what is the eighth place on down with Adam Adelson at the head of that little group at the moment. Kenton Cook looming very, very large. It's amazing how much bigger the BMW looks than the Porsche, or is than the Porsche. Yes. And then behind him, the other BMW, as he looks to the inside. Ooh, Kenton Cook there to uh, jump on the brakes to avoid from hitting the back of Adelson. That's going to give uh, Robbie Foley an opportunity to go around the outside of him in the S's. There, yeah, two BMWs side by side make a reasonable roadblock for... Uh, the 13 Chad McCombie driven Ford Mustang as they come down towards turn 12. Breaking area here. McCombie takes a late turn in, trying to cut back. Uh, and thanks to Marcus Miller, who's been watching the World Cup rugby and has now joined us. Big win for Ireland. Bonus point win for Ireland against Tonga. That could be important in their group. Hi, Marcus. Thank you for reminding me, I didn't know this, but it slipped my mind, the uh, camo livery on the 
the number 74 TCR car that we were talking about, a tribute to the late, great Ken Block, of course. Thank you for uh, mentioning that, Marcus. Good win for the Irish today in the Rugby World Cup, which goes on all the way through to the end of October, believe it or not. A uh, couple of cars that uh, are going to have to come in, in fact, I think have come in. Yes, they have. Harry Gutzacker, that was the equipment attached. 46, Hugh Plum, Team TGM car, uh, same. And somebody just got pinged for running the light at the end of pit lane uh, as well. And that was uh, the 70 and 74 car. Stop plus 60. So both of the Diley cars. Now I've now got I've got two penalties for those, a drive through and then a stop plus 60 for both of those cars. I'll, I'll, I'll expect it to just be the one of those. Um, both of those cars ran the red light at the pit lane exit. Uh, Shea Adam has got Alex, Elliot Skier down in the pit lane. Elliot, I know you've got to be so proud watching Adam Adelson out there in the Nola Sport Porsche because he's your best friend, but he's also kind of your, your mentee, the one you've been training. He's holding off Robbie Foley and Kenton Cook like it's nothing. Yeah, the kids definitely made a step up in the recent months, and uh, this just goes to prove it as well. Uh, the reason he's made the step up is from this sort of experience, right? I trust him to leave him in a little bit longer than we have to, and ultimately, with you know performances like this, it shows why we can leave him in a little longer. Uh, I'm absolutely loving it, watching him in the fight here against those guys. And yeah, we've got a good race car again. And you know, it's still a long race. I do think it happened, but uh, everyone in the old sports looking quite good right now. Now you two take team bonding up to another level. I know you just got back from a vacation. Was it Greece that you guys were in, just trying to get closer as co-drivers? Yeah, ultimately, right? We spend almost every day together, every day together, and it's pretty much at a racetrack. So get a bunch of his friends, get a couple of my friends, go out there and have a good time is always just a nice, refreshing way to do it. Uh, we went immediately into a test right from it. So the, the, the flight and sleep schedule is interesting. We weren't quite sure how we were going to perform, and frankly, that next two days were probably the best he's ever driven. So I'm like, we should probably do this more often, but it seems to work. Uh, but no, it's, it's been great. He's, his development's been incredible this year and just happy to be in this performance. Good luck for the rest of this race. Thank you so much. What a great story. Uh, we have gone through an hour and it is the Porsche of RS1 that leads now for Eric Filgueras. Just over three seconds for Daniel Morad in second place. Been a fantastic drive back by Winwood Racing, by the team and by Daniel and by Bryce as well. After he got knocked off, he was really carving his way through the field, Jeremy. He did so, and uh, the uh, but the last few laps, Eric Fulgueras, that, that Porsche seems really, really consistent. Daniel Morad not quite so consistent, and that's why that gap has stretched out a little bit to by about a, about a second over the course of the last three or four laps, so we'll see whether that trend continues. Uh, lapping very consistently out, out in front is Eric Fergus, 1 minute 30.9 last time around, so carrying on that good work from Stephen McAleer and extended that lead right now over Daniel Murad. He, in turn, is uh, edging away from the uh, championship leader, Kenny Murillo, in third position. Uh, he's uh, The gap back behind him to Roy van der Stur is about the same, 1.9 seconds last time, not last time around, with Nolan Siegel hanging in there really nicely in that car barn BMW, coming to 39 in fifth position. And then the uh, BM, the other BMW for Turnimus, with the camera Lawrence, who's been tracked down by Alex Filsinger, that McLaren uh, that qualified on pole position, slipped back a little bit at some stage in that early stint. But Alex Filsinger is showing really, really good pace now in this kind of middle portion of the race. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, Jeremy, what you were saying about the uh, the relative pace of the foot the front two cars in GS. Daniel Morad got that windward racing Mercedes up the pace very quickly and, and carved his way through the top six, including a twofer round the outside, which was very spectacular to watch. It's it's evened up uh, a little bit now. He took three tenths out of uh, Eric 
uh, last time around. But Eric, as you say, has been very consistent at the front of the field in that number 28. Uh, and what's going to be interesting to me is to see how the relative performance of those cars are at the end of their respective stints. They're on the same pit stop strategy. Oh, well, that might get thrown into uh, a little bit of uh, a different strategy because the number 70 TCR car has gone around. And that's right in harm's way for that Hyundai. Sitting facing oncoming traffic at turn seven. And everybody being waved to the inside. It's uh, Sally McNulty in that car. Just lost the back end of the daily number 70. Couple of cars having to make uh, grassy avoidances. Sally, not really much choice other than. Track. I don't understand why. She, well, there's a, there's a runoff area actually just to her left and may be able to get to that before she turns around. Turn to the left. Where is she going? Yeah, why did she just drive on the grass? The car's still. I mean, the good news is the car's still running and there's a big gap coming. These cars don't have handbrakes, so she's not going to be able to turn it around that easily. And she now has got it pointing in the right direction. But a nasty moment for half a lap or so, and has dropped a lot of real estate. And Shea Adams says the words that will strike fear into the hearts of team managers up and down the pit lane. Big ploppy raindrops at the at the start on the uh, start of the pit lane, which is where she is at the moment. So let's see if that develops. Again, it was not in the script. Daniel Mora continues his charge back to the front of the field. Took seven tenths off Eric Vergadas last time around. And all of a sudden, yeah. it's down to just over two seconds, the gap between yeah. first and second. That's interesting, John, isn't it? Because he'd, he'd lost ground for a couple of laps, yeah. and now he's gaining ground the last couple of laps. And as you say, a significant amount last time uh, around as uh, Fulgaris... Uh, it had been doing high 1 minute 30s, all of a sudden turned to 31.7 last time. So, Could just um, be traffic, Jeremy. It, you know, it gives, it takes yeah. away. Yeah, I'm not sure they've got caught the traffic yet, though. I, I don't think that's the issue. OK. Where are they, actually, at the moment? The TCR leader just coming onto the high banks. So where are our leaders at the moment, 28 and 57. Meantime, in further down the field, the number 88 green, Aston Martin. Sitting in 21st position for Todd Corbin in the Archangel Motorsport. Billy Johnson, a good start in that car. So they didn't have a good pit stop cycle then, did they? Hello to Ian McCarthy, who's joined us. He said, uh, I've been enjoying and admiring the Seoul M4 GT4 entry at the Circuit of Catalonia today. It seems now that that's finished, I've come to the right place if I want to see GT4 BMWs. We have, Ian. Hello. Welcome to our live free IMSA coverage here on the Radio Show Limited Network of Audio and Visual Channels. Uh, BMWs uh, in 5th, 6th, 8th, 9th and 11th position. Uh, I could go on further. And, uh, in 15th and 19th as well. In terms of the M4 GT4s, all the G82s, so all the latest model uh, of that. Yeah. Well, actually, no, we've got, an F we, we've got an F82, the Stephen Cameron car, the Nick Schaefer driven car that is still the older car isn't it that's the f82 oh, is it yeah is it? okay well, must have been, wasn't uh, wasn't aware of that but the the other cars the the newer cars the uh, the g82s they've been um, they've been uh, cut back a little bit they're, 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 there's very sort of chips basically power sticks they're called that uh, determine the engine horsepower effectively in these cars and there's a whole range of them, and they've gone down one stick, if you like, compared to the last couple of races. They had a big straight line speed advantage in particular in America, where it's fairly silly. They just marched past everybody on the straights, uh, and to a lesser extent of VIR. Well, they've been picked back a bit here, 
and uh, so the BMWs don't have that uh, big straight line speed advantage that they had a couple of races ago. But as you still still running, you're pretty comfortably there. Uh, there's what four of them in the top nine uh, and five in the top eleven. So there's BMW still running quite nicely. Uh, the windshield wipe is still on there for Eric yeah. Fulgaris. He's uh, back in, in, in mid, mid 31s now. 131.6. That's been his lap time each of the last three laps. Big sell coming in from the north and west. So from yeah. Jamestown and Brandsburg sort of area, south of uh, Zion, Zionsville, down the uh, I-65. RP then. Yes, indeed. So the opposite side of the track from Indianapolis International Airport. And uh, there's some very nasty looking uh, very nasty looking weather coming. Hello to Anthony Florio again. Has Rebel Rock made any indications on what they are going to do for 2024? Camaro in its final year. Uh, Robin Liddell gave a, a few hints uh, the last time we spoke to him and uh, they've not made any announcements yet. That's their story to break, but uh, it, it's sadly not going to be a GM product. They didn't get a shout for a and they wanted to move up into WeatherTech with a GT3 Mustang, but sadly um, they didn't get the call on that, which I, I think is slightly rankled with them after they've supported the poor tie for so long. I kind of understand that. So we'll, we'll wait, maybe have a chat with Robin before he gets in the car later on in this race. It's Andrew Davis who is driving that car at the moment. And in... 13th position at the moment. How can he scrap actually? Scott Andrews behind, Chad McCombie in front, and the Stephen Cameron racing car, Nick Schaefer as well, round about there. They've just disposed, about disposed of Bob McCallion actually, side by side coming onto the uh, front straight uh, in a couple of corners' time, the Nola motorsport car. Another sport car, and here comes Jensen Altman as well in behind the BMW, the blue and orange car. Yeah, and then a car that you're going to have to watch at the end of this race. Yes. I mean, Andrew Davis, he knows what his job is in that number 71 Rebel Rock Camaro. It's just run good lap times, keep it clean, then hand it over to Robin Liddell. And uh, that's exactly what Andrew is doing. He's moving his way up uh, steadily, uh, took the restart in the uh, 19th position uh, and is now up to 13th. That's number 71, Rebel Rock Camaro. Meanwhile, up at the front, Eric Filgueras, that the lead is uh, whittling down Jeez. now uh, as uh, Daniel Morad is uh, lapping consistently in the uh, low 31s, as opposed to the mid 31s now of Eric Filgueras. And that pair have pulled out almost nine seconds, or actually more than nine seconds now, over Kenny Murillo in third, who has been tracked down by Rory van der Stur and Nolan Siegel. So we're going to have a three-car battle for second place very shortly. Just talking about that Rebel Rock racing car. It looks very well planted, that Camaro. Runs out of uh, homologation at the end of the season, which is why the requirement for change for Rebel Rock, the opportunity for them perhaps to move up into WeatherTech Sports Car Championship as well. I think was the original plan that uh, Robin was telling us about. We'll see how that is modified. Good scrap though, as Jeremy said, with the Porsche ahead of them. Adam Adelson is catching by uh, a second and a half, Andrew Davis was. And behind him, he's got uh, Scott Andrews in the blue Lone Star, AMG blue and silver machine. Bit of traffic yeah. coming as well. That might be an opportunity for, uh, for uh, a little bit of overtaking. Yeah, and Scott Andrews, I spoke to him this morning. He they, he was struggling yesterday with that car, um, the Lone Star Racing Mercedes, kind of number 27, running in 14th position now, uh, and they certainly made some strides. They, they were scratching their heads yesterday. They couldn't figure out why they weren't to oh. where they thought they should be. He said the car felt great. It was handling beautifully. It wasn't as if it was uh, oversteering or understeering or misbehaving in any way at all. It just wasn't fast. But uh, they've uh, clearly got that car working a lot better now. And uh, Scott Andrews has worked his way up uh, quite nicely. He's another Just guy who started 
quite a long way back at the restart, working his way forward, John. And just had a very good Porsche Deluxe uh, Carrera Cup North America race as well. Drove a very, very sensible, mature uh, and successful race. Don't spoil it for you if you haven't seen it. Who um, did? Hmm? Scott Who Andrews. Did? Yeah. Scott. Scott Andrews was doing the Porsche race. Uh, no, he wasn't. I'm talking complete nonsense, aren't I? Sorry. I, I know he's a busy guy. He, he's he, not he, that he'll busy. Drive, he will drive anything anywhere. Yeah. He's uh, he's not been that busy, though, however. Um, he's right up on the tail of the number 71 Camaro that is right up on the tail of the Porsche. They're going down into turn one, lapping one of the Hyundai TCR cars as they do so. Is there an opportunity for Andre to go down the inside? He sort of thinks about it, but doesn't do the late dive. Holds back, tries to get the crossover through turn two and a slightly better run into turn three. This is smashing driving from all of these. Jerry Z asking the question, at what point do they swap onto wet tyres? Do they even have wet tyres if there's been no rain in the forecast? Always have wet tyres, Jerry. Always have wet tyres at the track. Uh, Michelin uh, bring... A, an allocation for everybody. Said uh, it's a difficult choice, I presume. But warm slicks can handle a bit of rain right up until the point they can't. You're spot on there, Jeremy. And it comes down to communication between the pit wall and the drivers. And obviously, if it's absolutely bucketing down, then that makes a fairly simple decision. It's when it's that in between, and you might have to tough it out for a couple of more laps because you think it's going to stop. You don't want to do one extra pit stop. It'll also depend on when it comes, if it comes, and how hard it comes in terms of where your pit strategy lies. You might want to do another three or four laps and trying to get into back into your pit window. So there's a huge amount of moving parts, but ultimately, no point in leaving your driver out to save a pit stop if two laps further on he puts it into the wall and you don't finish because he can't get any grip from your slick tyres so it is that literally a balancing act but you've got to work with the driver and talk him through the situation still the battle going on for positions just outside the top 10 12th position Adam Adelson in the yellow white and black Porsche He's been learning so much oh. today when he ended oh, yeah. here. Uh, rightly proud of Adam. He's not been racing that long, Adam Adelson, but uh, doing a super job here, battling with some of the best here. Uh, you know, holding off Andrew Davis and Scott Andrews right there as well. This is uh, really a lot of fun for him, but also a big learning curve. And he's he's driving beautifully. He's not he's not driving on his mirrors. He's just uh, driving his lines, making sure he, he doesn't make any mistakes. And uh, if he does that, it's going to be difficult for that Camaro to find a way past. Bit of traffic could also always play into that battle for the lead now. Daniel Morad has caught Eric Filgueras as they go past the Go Racing uh, bright orange Audi down into turn one. Here comes Morad, classic overtaking manoeuvre, clean as you like. And Filgueras not really fighting that, Jeremy. That would suggest to me that there's another plan afoot here. Either Eric Filgueras is saving fuel or he's got an issue with that car. Maybe he's used his Michelins too much in the early part of this stint. Although it was Daniel that was charging on the restart. But that has been a good drive. A brilliant restart from Daniel Morad after Bryce was Bryce Ward was uh, unceremoniously elbowed off the track on the first lap. Bryce got himself together, concentration, a good pit stop cycle behind the safety car, and now the Windward Racing Mercedes AMG GT4 leads the motor race. What a comeback for them. Yeah, great comeback indeed. And uh, on that last lap, uh, I don't know if there's some traffic possibly for, for Garris. Well, there must have been some traffic, I think, because he was a good bit slower on that previous lap. His previous three laps, he's upped his, he's, he had upped his pace again, running in a high one minute 30s. Uh, well, the last lap was a 32. Uh, and that's what uh, gave uh, Morad got a good run as the leaders uh, lapped a couple of slower TCR cars that enabled Morad to get a run on him and get, make that move into turn one. But it's been a fine comeback uh, from them. And meanwhile, up into third position now is uh, Nolan Siegel and number 39 Carbon BMW. He's over the last uh, three or four laps, he's overtaken first of all the number nine 19 car.
Pantister, and now most recently Kenny Murillo in the Mercedes as well. So Siegel up into third position in car number 39. And the super battle farther back down the field. I mean, the, the, these are cars towards the, the end of the uh, the end of the lead lap in GS. But what a battle it is! It's about uh, seven or eight of them all that pretty much it knows the tail. Toby Grohovic uh, and uh, Bob Kalian just having a bit of a scrap there as the fast track racing BMW takes the position. That's for 17th and 18th. At there, but look, they're, they're having a battle. They are that is a genuine battle of pace and for position. And uh, let's you know, hats off to them. There's a big field here, and they're, they're having their scraps further down the field. Might not be for an overall podium, but uh, they're keeping on the lead lap at the moment. Little mistake by Kyle Washing GMG Racing Cayman, and that's. Uh, has allowed Moisey Oretsky, but actually went past Moisey Oretsky, didn't he, down into turn one, but uh, managed to hold on to it in that number 32. Two multicoloured cars gravitated towards each other and are fighting their way through. Still windscreen wipers going at the moment. We've still got over two hours and a half to go, two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, slide by that number 32 car. Now, does that mean the rain is getting worse? And Carl Washington did a great job. He was absolutely full lock, left-hand side, trying to hold on to that car and somehow managed to keep it from spearing off into the wall. It's a really interesting colourway on that car. The GMG machine lives to fight on. Sitting in 22nd position in the... GS category. So he's coming up against a battling TCR pack. They're still, you know, comfortably on the lead lap there. Yeah, maybe three quarters of a lap down, but it's a super battle going yeah. on. Whoa, yikes! Yeah, he. So this all started back at turn one about a lap and a half yeah. ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, he lost his brakes a little bit, I think, at turn one, and then trying to fight back uh, with uh, Moisey Oretsky trying to go the long way around. That looked like the Victor Gonzalez Hyundai that he was trying to pass into turn seven and got onto the grass, and that's why he got pitched sideways. It was still a damn fine save in point of fact, but it was self-inflicted at that point. Yeah. <laughs> great fun, that's a fabulous battle though. For, ah, great. From sort of 16th place down to 22nd. It is really, really good fun. Uh, 50 laps then competed by uh, uh, Daniel Morad. Uh, and he leads by 1.4 seconds last time around, 131.3 last time for the race leader. Uh, but I'm watching uh, the uh, the progress now of a couple of the other BMWs. Cameron Lawrence is working his way up uh, nicely. He's caught right up with Kenny Murillo uh, and dragging Alex Filsinger and Robbie Foley with him as well. So we've now got a, a four-car battle for fifth position. It's Cameron Lawrence just holding off from... That's, he's got past. Uh, he's got past. Got past Kenny Murillo. Yeah. Okay. So the yellow and blue BMW has gone past the uh, orange and blue AMG GT. That was the battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh, by the way. With uh, Robbie Foley actually cl closing in on that, and in fact, yeah. Robbie Foley's just gone past the Mia McLaren and made up a position. So Alice Filsinger goes back to eighth position. He's going to lose another position here as well because Ken Cook and the random Vandals BMW is right there as well as they close up on their Hart Honda. Not a battle for position there, different class. If you are just joining us, good to have you company. Thank you very much. We've got about uh, two hours and 36 minutes remaining. We had a little crisis in the global broadcast center uh, this morning when I realized we'd used our last sacred coffee pod and I was wondering how we we're going to get through thank goodness uh, for Tubbs and the rest of the team there was already some on its way and whether you're in the US or the UK and Europe sacredcafe.com and after you order if you put the code in Campbell C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L -L 20 in uh, honour 
of the pole position in WeatherTech for Matty Campbell. Uh, first and second, in fact, for the two Porsches. Secret proud partner of uh, Porsche Racing and here at IMSA Radio as well. 20% off your order, whether in the US or the UK, sacredcafe.com. Uh, powering motorsport broadcasting <laughs> as far as my side of things is going at the moment. And I may have to have at least one more before the end of the show with two and a half hours still to go on this busy weekend and Super Saturday. And our main race will race into the dark here. And that is still to come. If you weren't with us last night, you're going to love this, particularly if you're watching on IMSA TV. If you're in the US, uh, sorry, if you're outside of the US at the moment and listening on IMSA Radio, as long as you're not driving, get yourself on to imsaradio.com and hit the menu button at the top left. And the first menu item is live video. Uh, no interruptions on that. And you can watch to the end of the race. When we say flag to flag, we absolutely mean just that. This is intriguing now because Daniel Morad, having caught up and passed Eric Filgueras, Jeremy, for the lead of the race, has pulled out two seconds. Uh, and six tenths of that was on the last lap. So Filgueras still lapping in the late 131s, low 131s for Daniel Morad. So is this strategy for Filgueras? They're both pitted at the same time, of course, because of the, the safety car. So what's going on here? Has Eric got a problem? Or is there something more clever going on, or even more sinister? There's no concern no, from the team, says she. I think the Mercedes is good. It's, it's just working really well. Woodward Racing have, have got that Mercedes, that particular Mercedes working really, really well. And I think he's just quicker at this stage uh, in the race. Uh, not by a lot, but, uh, you know, the gaps are edged out just a little bit, a couple, a couple of tenths here and there. But interestingly, Nolan Siegel in third position in that car barn BMW, he's matching pace with Eric Filgueras. That gap has remained constant now for the last uh, six or seven laps. Uh, and Siegel, in turn, is pulling away uh, quite uh, quite rapidly from the battle behind him with uh, with Rory van der Sur now coming under increasing pressure from Cameron, Cameron Lawrence, Kenny Marilla and Robbie Foley. Let's go down to Shep, who's been uh, trawling the pit lane for some interviews. Rob McGinnis. You are definitely the person that Diane Swintall, who knows everything about people coming up the road to Indy, said for sure. Talk to him here because, Rob, this track, this road course, it's been kind to you in the past in Openville, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Um, you know, winning here in Indy Lights was amazing. Being on pole for the Freedom 100 was something I won't forget. So I love this place. I love racing here. And the first time I raced a GT car was here in the Indy 8 hour. So this is a special place for me. A lot of happy memories. Now you come back here, you're in the BMW, the M4 GT4. It looks solid. I mean, we're seeing other cars not being able to get around it or battle with it. The BMW, do you think at the end of this race, it could be a bunch of BMWs going for the win? Um, yeah, I think the BMW, I think we have very strong race pace. There are definitely some cars that are a decent bit quicker than us with the BOP right now, but it's such a solid platform that, you know, it starts to sprinkle and we're fast. It gets hot, we're fast, it's cold, we're fast. So this team will do a good job of executing and putting me in a position to fight for the win at the end here. You and Cameron splitting it 50-50, trying to keep it even? I think so. I don't, you know, it depends on yellows and whatnot. And Cameron's doing a great job, so, uh, you know, if we can keep moving forward, then let's, uh, let's leave men for a bit, right? Good luck out there. Thank you. A couple of people asking about when we're talking about dark, how dark is dark? Is it Daytona 24 dark or Sebring 12 hour dark? Very much Sebring 12 hour dark. Only for about half an hour at the end of the race, but there are some pretty much unlit sections of the track. This is, this is not a racetrack that normally races in the dark. So even the, the sections of the the speedway aren't lit like uh, Daytona would be. There's some uh, high-level lights on the front straight, all in contact between the number 77, Nick Schaefer, driven uh, Stephen Cameron um, uh, BMW, and the Nola Sport Adam Adelson Porsche. That one's been brewing for a little while for 14th and 15th position. And this was 
a little bit more than it, excuse me, up on the kerb for the BMW. Almost all four Michelins there, that'll be getting looked at. Uh, going back, yes, some high level lighting on the on the front straight, uh, which is is more like standard street lighting. So little pools of light if you as you go down the front straight to the driver's left, so the grandstand side of things. Uh, and then at various points around the first part of the lap, there are similar types of lighting. Um, but round from nine and 10 to around about turn 12, I don't think there's a light. It's really, really dark over there. In fact, even coming down into turn seven, we were struggling to identify the cars last night. Uh, and it, even though our camera operators and all of our techs um, and all of the technology that's in the cameras actually make it look a lot less dark than it was. Uh, it, it, it's dark. So for half an hour, 20 minutes at the end of the race, you've got the ability to tune in to IMSA TV. Please do, because uh, you're going to enjoy it. We're talking about glowing exhausts and little flames coming out the back of out of the back of the McLaren and glowing brake discs and all of the good stuff that you love about racing in the dark. And if you're trackside, then even better. Oh, mistake for the number 13, Chad McCombie. That's unusual. Missed his breaking point down at 12 again. Is that just a little bit of inconsistency in the uh, in the grip levels down there? Actually, that wasn't a 12. That was in the early part. That must be turn one. My apologies. So there's that uh, green and white random vandals BMW closing in again now on uh, Robbie Foley just ahead of him, and then Kenny Murillo ahead of him, and Cameron Lawrence in the other turn of the BMW at the head of the trade of cars sandwiching the number 33 car. Well, how's that falling back? Harry Gottsacker. That's a good point, Jeremy. Um, Down in seventh now. Yeah, oh, sure. no, 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 um, I had, to, had to do a drive through for Cook going, leaving with the fuel hose attached. Ah, right, yeah, of course we yeah. yeah. Cook, well done. Uh, Cher reminded me uh, on that, so thank you, Cher. Yep. Uh, that incident this... between the uh, number 77 and 47 cars that we were just describing to you, Nick Schaefer for Stephen Cameron and Nola Sports, Adam Adelson, under review. Yeah, and all of a sudden now the gap from first to second is stretching out. Uh, Eric Filgaris is down 32-7 last time around, so I'm not sure whether he's uh, suddenly running into some tyre wear or, or what, because uh, Nolan Siegel, the gap back to uh, Nolan Siegel in third place, has come down by more than a second on that last lap, actually a second and a half on that last yeah. lap. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that one. Uh, Daniel Murray, he's running nice consistent laps at the front of the field, 131.0 uh, last time around. And he's done a few uh, 31 flats, actually, hasn't he? He's done a lot of them, absolutely yeah. right, he has, yeah. And then this super battle here for, well, Rory van der Stur is just ahead of the uh, the BMW of uh, of uh, Cameron Lawrence. So it's Kenny Murillo, Robbie Foley, Kenton Cook, uh, right in his mirrors. And also, uh, behind Nolan Siegel, um, Seal is still pulling away a little bit from the number 19 car of Rory van der Stur. Yes, yeah, scratch that. Uh, he, van der Stur actually edged, edged, edged out just a little bit over this this battle that's going on behind him as the Kenny Murillo finds his way past, at least briefly, Cameron Lawrence. Uh, Murillo all battling. It. It's the two Turner cars that are there. Cameron Lawrence and Robbie Forley as into the pits for Nolan Siegel. That is the new BMW for Carbon. Uh, so okay. that is with an hour and 33 gone, and the two Turner BMWs hunting in a pack uh, go up ahead of Kenny Murillo. So they are now fourth and fifth with Murillo in sixth, and now coming under pressure from Kenton Cook in the random vandals green and white BMW. So BMWs. Uh, three BMWs, a brood of BMWs beating up the 72 AMG and here comes Kenton Cook, he's got position to the left hand side down the middle straight and will outbreak that number 72 car into turn seven, does so. Now and I'm wondering whether John that uh, number 39 car pit stop the car barn Nolan Siegel running really nicely in third position. 
Whether that's uh, back time to the end of the race, I think from here he can get to the end on two stops. I'm wondering whether he's kind of one of the first drivers to to make that decision, that decision to yeah. come in. Always want to make your last pit stop the first, if that makes sense. So you've got a back time uh, to that. And those positional changes, Shea Adam, who was watching that pit stop, but those positional changes with the BMW and the 72, uh, the two Turner BMWs and the random Vandals and that 72 AMG, that's championship implications as well there. Hello, Shea. We'll come back to Shea in just a moment. So 6.4 6 seconds at the head of the field for Daniel Morad. Another 30, a low 31 for him last time around. The, the first three separated by just over 20 seconds now. In TCR, Michael Lewis still leads the pair of Brian Herter Autosport Hyundais. Whisper it quietly, Tim Lewis, KMW Motorsports, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce, TCR, in third position. Tim Lewis, who qualified the car yesterday and got in at the first stop. So Michael Lewis, some eight seconds ahead of his teammate, and then another couple of seconds back to the third place TCR car, that Alpha. So that's 10 seconds between the top three. And about another 14, 13, 14 seconds back to Brian Ortiz, Van der Stur racing in the 91 Hyundai. What a run at the front of the field for Daniel Morad. Windscreen wipers have stopped going at the moment. So with a bit of luck, we may have missed the worst of the weather. Kenny Murillo comes in in the number 72 AMG. Uh, let's see if we can go back down to share in the pit lane, Shay. Well, it's full service and a driver change for the Morsing Motor Cars sponsored car. comes the 88 Aston Martin as well. That's called Todd Coleman, who's bringing that car in. Uh, that is also going to be full service and a driver change. Exactly two minutes, two hours, 22 minutes and 22 seconds to go, all the twos as we start the next round of pit stops. That's round about 35, 36 laps, Jeremy, for the, the GS runners. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. We, when we, we went green with an hour 40... Yeah, it's about, about 50 minutes, isn't it? To, is it? Yeah, it's about right now to make a, a, a pit stop. Uh, and certainly here comes the uh, second-place car onto pit lane now, so 60 laps completed by... Uh, by number 28 car, which came into the pits last on lap 25. Uh, there were, what, four laps of yellow before we went back to green, and then green from lap 30 to lap 60, so 30 laps of green flag running for that, uh, the uh, Porsche in second position. Uh, let's go to share down in the pit lane. Let's talk about the championship implications we talked about before, and also the pit stops that are going on now. We have had a driver change in the 72 Marilla Racing Mercedes. It was Kenny Marilla who started the race, Christian Simchuk, who has just taken over. By the way, first time 
in living memory, at least as far as my living memory goes, we only have one Marilla Racing entry. Jeff Mosing, we hope you recover very quickly soon. I know he just had surgery and he's feeling better every day after that back issue in the uh, race at Road America. But to continue on with what we've seen in the pit lane, it has been tires and fuel for Turner Motorsports and the number 96 Turner Motorsport BMW. And because that car got more than one position ahead of the 72 Marilla Racing Mercedes, the championship order changed. Ten points separating them coming into the race this weekend, meaning that one position on the racetrack, depending on where you are, has made a difference. We've also had Billy Johnson back into the Archangel Racing Aston Martin taking over for Todd Coleman. Spencer Pompelli is in the BGB portion now because Tom Collingwood's job is done. The 46 Team TGM car is in. There is one plump brother up on the wall and one plump brother behind the wheel. That will swap out for them. And the most nerve-wracking news I can give to the pit lane up and down, a wild Robin Liddell is standing on the wall ready to take over from Andrew Davis in the Rebel Rock Racing Camaro. Eric Fogueras stayed aboard the RS1 Porsche, but did get four tires and fuel. And Daniel Morad stayed aboard the 57 Wimbledon Racing Mercedes AMG, which came in from the lead at the moment, but owing us a pit stop. It is an Aston Martin that leads. Rory van der Stur, the number 19 blue and white car from Alex Filsinger for Motorsport in Action, the Mia McLaren Artura. GT4 in second position, the 69. Then Scott Andrews for Lone Star Racing in third. All of these drivers uh, needing a stop. Chad McCombie did that car's fastest lap last time around. That car being the mostly white number 13 Ford Mustang GT4, a one minute 31.4. There's a rueful shake of the head uh, at the BMW number 95 with the white bonnet, the white hood. Not sure they got all their fuel in there for Turner Motorsport, the car that was brought in by Cameron Lawrence because the fueler did not look happy at all. TCR stops as well now and the first two are in the pit lane for them. Shit. Into the pits came the number one. Michael Lewis brought the car in. Taylor Haggard will take it out. This duo, which won the championship the last two years, knows that they are not in championship contention this year, so they've decided to mix it up with Michael qualifying the car and Taylor learning how to finish it. Well, now she is in for the remaining two hours and 18 minutes of this race, and she's got a lot to learn out there at Indy, particularly at night, because it's going to get this race. Into the pit lane also comes the Rebel Rock Camaro, and as mentioned, the driver change was planned. Let's see, does Rob and Liddell jump off the wall? Yes, he does. Needs no second invitation. Fuel and four tires will be going on the Camaro. That's the sound of Taylor Hagler getting things going once again. And now up on the wall for the sister car for Brian Herta Autosport. We do have a Mark Wilkins ready to jump in for Mason Felipe. Should be within the next two laps. Problem with the 95 stop was they couldn't get the horse on properly at the start of the... at the, at the start of that stop. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, thank you to Aaron up in Charlotte for uh, spotting that one for us. Still got uh, two hours and 17 minutes to go. So that's another set of pit stops for most of the drivers. Van der Stur comes in from the lead. That means we might see the McLaren scored as the leader. Yes, we will. The blue and white Aston is in, and the Mia McLaren, Alex Filsinger, goes to the lead for a lap or two. It's full service for the VDSR blue and white with a little bit of yellow on it, uh, and that means that Rory will be getting out of that car. Andrew Scott out of the Lone Star Racing Machine, Rebel Rock Racing. Uh, uh, Robin Liddell, as Shea mentioned, he was standing by. Andrew Davis out. Robin in giving him a little over two hours to get to the end of the race, about two hours and 16 minutes. Uh, Marty saying, why do some teams have fuel hoses versus fuel cans? They've all got fuel hoses. The can that you see is an overflow. Um, that's for a vent or a catch can. And sometimes, oh, and in fact, uh, down in the pit lane, there's been a bit of a spillage of fuel uh, as well. I um, think that one might have been from the Mia McLaren, uh, but we'll get that checked out. 
Uh, no, that car hasn't pitted yet, has it? So it can't have been them, and it's not going to be this lap either, as the opportunity to pit has been issued. They've gone round for another lap. Uh, we'll get Shea to find out where that petrol is sitting uh, in the pit lane. So this is playing out rather nicely, Jeremy. We've had a good long chunk of <coughs> a no. <coughs> so we're seeing the relative pace of these cars, and this is good news for the technical department at IMSA as well. Have they got their BOP calculations right? And uh, at the moment, it's been uh, it's been pretty even. The drivers and the teams making the difference, and I'm I'm all right with that because you you don't want to. Uh, try and, and be or pay the teams or the drivers. It's it's got to just be the performance potential of the cars. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely right uh, on that score. And the, the McLaren. I mean, I think you know one think I have a hard time not thinking that, be, that McLaren's come out of nowhere. But having said that, uh, three times out of the last five races, mm. Alex Filsinger, who, who had qualified the car among the top six, yep. which is pretty stout. It never really run up at the front. Uh, but uh, Justin Lazaric was who qualified the car today and ran a brilliant first stint uh, for most of it. Uh, we are running really, really strongly. And Alex had a really good run there uh, through the, that uh, you know, second stint of the race. Uh, not sure whether they've changed drivers again or whether uh, Alex will stay in for a second stint and then probably have Jesse finish it off uh, later on. But still, you know, still a long, long way to go. Still more uh, than a regular length of these races, so not even halfway yet. Uh, in, in this race with 64 laps completed and now finally the McLaren comes onto the pit lane so uh, I think that'll be there's only a couple of cars yet I think now all the GS cars have made their second stop it's just a few TCRs that haven't yet made their second stop the, the best place of have been Tim Lewis in the Alfa Romeo who's now running in fifth position overall Leader is in the pit lane Alex Filsinger for Mia uh, the McLaren Artura, and it was the number 19 Aston van der Stur, uh, racing car. Valentin has a clock, has taken that car out, but that's where the fuel spill was. Also in the pit lane, the number 79 Stephen Vazier, NV Autosport Ford Mustang. That's the very attractive blue car. She's made her way down to that fuel spill. That's quite a lot of fuel, Shea. That was a mistake to come down to that end of the pin lane, John. Honestly, there's sand that they poured down is just kicked up in the air, and it's a bit like fire extinguishing. Trying to breathe it in is quite brutal, but it's that much that has uh, been laid down petrol-wise that they need a lot of, well, what we affectionately call kitty litter to try and soak it all up. It spans the length of the box and actually moves halfway into the transition lane as well. So my next question to them will be how much fuel actually got in the car. As for the Mia McLaren, fuel and tires for that car. No driver change yet, but Jesse Lazare's job today, not yet done. He was the driver who was in it at night last night. Shea down in the pit lane, Jeremy Shaw and John Hindorf in the booth. After that, uh, there's still uh, Steve Cameron BMW still got to make its second pit stop. And when, and when that does that, that will have Daniel Morad back in the lead with seven and a half seconds uh, of a lead uh, over uh, the second place car, which is still Eric Fulgueras for RS1 and the Porsche. Uh, did you mention that number 19 car had a penalty? Yes. OK, fine. That's just served it there. Valentin uh, has a clock uh, in the, the uh, in the Spur car. racing. Uh, pit equipment uh, attached. So yeah. that's, uh, that's dropped that car out of the top three. Uh, that could be very, very costly for Van der Stur Racing. Yeah. Uh, it will be very costly for Van der Stur Racing. The fact that that was pit equipment attached means that that fuel spill was after the service, probably. Yeah. Um, and it's quite unusual, actually, that that fires uh, a fuel spill off. So that must have been a fairly major mistake uh, to, uh, to get that. It wasn't just a little bit. It sounds like it's dragged the fuel hose. Uh, and that's where the, the fuel hose come from. Uh, Robert Wiggins has been installed, and I use that word advisedly, into the number 33 Hyundai. This is the car that is running the yellow and white colours, remember? $100 to charity for every Hyundai lap laid. 
in this race. And there have been Legion at the moment. Now in the pit lane, Chris Miller for Unitronic. Uh, just waiting for that car to fire back up and move out, and it has done. That's the, what was the pole sitting car? Uh, the car came in dead stick, according to Shea. So did they actually run that car dry? Also in Van der Stur Racing, their blue and white Hyundai. And that's uh, Brian Ortiz and Tyler Maxson's car. Brian brought that car in from the lead of TCR. So we'll see how they all cycle back out again. A couple of moments ago, out on the circuit. Big move by the number 27. Oh, Daniel Morad actually going across the grass there. And it was Scott Andrews, wasn't it? Uh, and here's the, yes, the leader sorry, now. Yes, it was, 27, yes. Yeah, that the was leader a of TCR position. Uh, is uh, Brian Ortiz, they're making the pit stop. So that leaves the Goo Racing um, Audi bright orange car, leaves the 55 car in the lead and hearing from the pit lane that uh, they did down at Miller uh, run Chris Miller out of fuel so the 17 car oh. literally coasted into its service um, a bit tight that I would have thought Jeremy yeah when you're going for a championship uh, yeah you, I mean, you certainly uh, push the limits but you, you don't want to overset the mark and that could have been very very costly have, have, have they got away with it how much time have they lost well, that's a good question yeah, well, probably quite a lot. Well, they, they, I mean, they, they'd sort of gone down a little bit. Mike Taylor is in the car now. I uh, reckon he's somewhere around Chad Gilsinger on the dancing ants here, so that would put him sort of eighth or ninth, just behind uh, Robert Wiggins, who's rejoined in the 33 Hyundai. I'll try and pick that car. This is the uh, 17, the car that was Paul sitting in. TCR. Pick it up next time it comes across the line. Right, let's pick up some of the drivers who have jumped out in that pit lane sequence. We'll go down to AMG Mercedes uh, and to Kenny Marillo, who's with Shea Adam. Kenny, that looks so busy and chaotic out there at the start. What was your Mercedes like for the opening stints? No, I was trying to make it a clean Mercedes, but unfortunately I wasn't able to but uh, you know, really grateful to be here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway with the roller racing team. The, our Mercedes AMG GT4 is working really well on these Michelin tires. And um, yeah, just a little disappointed with the run. But uh, you know, it is what it is. Can't change it now. How much harder is it for Marilla Racing with only the one car? Yeah, I mean, it's a really big blow to the whole program, uh, especially not having Eric Cross around and Jeff Mosing. This guy's. Uh, had a lot of great insight, not only on the track but off the track. So it's we missed him a lot, and uh, yeah, it is a pretty big blow to our program. But uh, uh, yeah, it is what it is. We're just going to keep moving forward. Fingers crossed for the rest of the race. Great, thank you. Slight uh, air of resignation there in that chat with Shea Adam. Yeah, it was a little bit, but I mean, look, he, he ran a really good stint. He did. did uh, did Kenny there? He was uh, you know, holding there in top five or six. That's what that's what he needs. Um, the, the bad news is that uh, Robbie Foley, uh, who came into this race just ten points behind the number 96 guy, is a couple of places ahead of Christian Schimjak at this point in about uh, 12, 13 seconds. But still a long, long, long way to go. I mean, as I said, we're still uh, well over two hours remaining, two hours and seven minutes remaining in this race. So a lot of strategy, a lot of uh, driving to pan out before we see the checkered flag. And Christian Shimjak is up to speed now in the in that number 72 car, running into seventh position, pretty much on his own at the moment. He's got a bit of a, a margin over the uh, Mia McLaren that is uh, behind him. Uh, a good, good lap there from, from Alex Filser. He got past Scott Andrews on that lap, not quite sure what happened there, but Andrews had a problem of some sort, and right with them now, in ninth position is Robin Liddell. Yeah, Robin Liddell, uh, only 48 seconds away from the lead. 
Sounds like a lot, but really isn't. The car has got a lot of pace in it. A lot of pace in it. And there's still just over two hours to go, so two more pit stops for the GS cars. Car number 88 has gone behind the wall. That's the Billy Johnson, Archangel Motorsport, Aston. Awful news for them. We're right up at the sharp end of the field early on, Jeremy. Yeah, they had a good run in the early stages, didn't they? And uh, it's like uh, Brad had some problems. I mean, they've had nothing but, uh, but uh, niggly little problems with that team that's cost them potentially good results. Uh oh, there's the uh, the goo racing. Hyundai beached in the gravel trap, and that is almost Abby. certainly going to bring out a full course caution. Just changed drivers there. So it's Lalo behind the wheel in that Audi. It's one of the new cars with the reverse swan neck rear wing. A really nice design on the wheel arches as well. It used to be a, an area of problem you could get a little bit of side-by-side -side contact and the, the wheel arches would start flapping around, looking like an angry owl from the front, or penguin. Full course yellow has come out. Under the skin, there's a few changes on that car as well, with a, a different system of uh, rear roll bar, which goes in a straight line right across the back of the car. It used to be... Uh, formed around the rear suspension but the Evo car has had that change makes it much easier to adjust and to change just lost the back end of the car turn four already the IMSA Chevy safety truck and the AMR safety team are on site they'll put the long strap on that and drag Lalogu out of the pit lane in a very strikingly coloured uh, Audi that number 55 not miss that one in the car park. Actually, I think it really works actually with the black um, grill and the black Audi badges and the detailing on that car. Rather reminds me of the old uh, Cupra, same stable of course, the black face Cupra, Cupra Negra as it was called, one of the high performance cars. No Cupras here because they aren't sold in the US. Although that is going to be a standalone company now for Volkswagen AG as they are winding down the SEAT brand in Europe. So Cupra, which was the sports arm of that, uh, will be left. But, uh, SEAT is being wound up, so we will lose some uh, of the other models. Part of uh, VAG's plan to rationalise their brands. So this is going to be interesting then. Uh, who comes in now and who doesn't? Uh, just over two hours remaining in this race. Assume this caution is going to take about uh, 15 minutes because it's been a long, long time since we've had a caution. So we will go through, uh, first of all, the, uh, the, the wave around for those cars that are in between the safety car and the class leader, i.e. the TCR class leader. If you've been lapped at uh, GS, you're, you're lapped, that's it. And we've got uh, 17 cars on the lead lap, the last of them being Michael Cooper, the accelerated performance number 44 car. First car not on the lead lap is the GMG uh, Porsche car number 32 in the 18th position, driven by J Jerome Blakemol, and so it's a shame he's a lap down, because that would be interesting to watch him. Also a lap down is Luca Mars in the Cormo Sports uh, Ford, uh, Pete Mercier in the number 77 Stephen Cameron race, if you ever, he took over after a really good first stint there, apart from a little incident by Nick uh, Schaefer. Uh, he also a lap down. Uh, and then Novesco Kozurov uh, in the rear racing Porsche, and Matt Plum, who made that error early on. I think, lap down. I think if I'm a TCR runner, I'm pitting. Because it's one oh, more stop from here. Uh, that's that's where I was going with that comment. Yeah. The TCR cars will be in now because they can... Um, when did they last pit? Well, only actually, not that long ago. Yeah, but 
some of I don't them... think that. I, I think they, they will pit now, and then yeah, they exactly. can definitely get to the end on one stop with Correct. no problems. I think it doesn't matter that they only stopped nine, seven, eight, uh, five, six, six. I don't think it matters. I, I think they come in. Uh, they, they, brim, they might well, not even put a new set guys, of tyres on if they change tyres. Some of those might, be, might well be able to get to the end the without making this extra stop now, particularly the cars that pitted later. The 91, True. unfortunately, the 55 is uh, is uh, is off the, off the road. Uh, but the number 91 car is in, in very, very good shape here. And that, that came in a few laps after most of the other contenders good in point. TCR. Yeah, that's uh, Van der Stur Racing Hyundai Elantra, the 91, the blue white car. Currently running uh, with Tyler Maxson behind the wheel. When did the Alpha uh, come into pit lane? Was it just scroll? Uh, that was that was only a lap. That was a lap before. Yeah. Actually, the number 91 car that came in just a lap before. Well, I, so, I, I may be proof wrong. I think they're going to be staying out. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't surprise me if they stayed out. If you're a little bit, maybe if you're a little bit further down the field, but still on the lead lap in in TCR. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty much every, well, no, the, the top seven cars are on the lead lap in yeah. TCR. Yeah, down to Mikey Taylor. Well, that's so a quick one, car. number 98, 5, 15, 91, 33, uh, 17, and 89, I think, which is uh, getting the wave around now to uh, come back onto the tail end of the lead lap in TCR. The 99 car, no, that's uh, that's another lap down, so he will not be on the lead lap. I mean, the leader is the car that's been out the longest. They're working their 11th lap since they stopped. Uh, the car that's been out there the least, I think, is Tyler Maxson. He's only Correct. six laps into the stint, and most people are seven or eight. So the leading number one car is the car that's been out the longest if you're Mikey Taylor in seventh if you just nip into the pits top it off give yourself the opportunity you have to be able to run full um, they ran Chris Miller out of fuel uh, in the car uh, they've just put their fastest lap of the race in before the yellow came out uh, the pits have opened wow. um, and we have got, oh, the leader is into the pit lane. So yeah. there you go. That's the answer to your question. Shit, Adam. Dan Moran is meant for fuel only. It is also a splash of fuel and tires for the Stephen Cameron BMW. I think that's the new model car. Yes, it is. So that would be the 43. We've got one of the Turner cars. This is the one with the white hood, meaning it is the 95. Might it be time for Rob McGinnis to take over? I think so. We've got Robin. Liddell in the pit lane. That was the sound. I just had to pause for a minute and let the uh, Camaro speak for itself. Back out already is Daniel Morad in the number 57 Mercedes. The McLaren came in. That is Alex Filsinger staying aboard for another stint, but we do expect to see Jesse Lazare before the end of this race one more time. Fuel only for the McCombie McAleer Ford Mustang. That is Jensen Altman. And fuel only for the 83 uh, Spencer Pompelli. They just put the car up on the air jacks, but I don't see any tire change going on, so that's intriguing. Random vandals in there as well as they come out of the pit lane. Hearing from Shea that the number five Alpha Romeo Giulietta will come in next time by. So Robert Liddell came in as well for a splash of fuel. Yeah, the only cars that didn't, it was one, two, three, four, five cars that didn't come in uh, from uh, GS. Number 28 car will be the best place of them, Robbie Foley. Uh, the other turn of most what BMW the one that didn't pit is number 96. That's Scarlett's running in uh, second place in the championship. And if it stays right there, it'll be third. It'll be first. Uh, the car right behind him also did pit. That is the championship leader, Christian Shimjak for Marilla Racing, also taking a bit of a gamble here by not stopping during this caution period. The other cars that didn't are the Nola Sport Porsche, number 47, and the fast track racing BMW, car number 26. Just going to remind both Jeremy and Shea 
that we are looking for the Michelin moment of the race in the TCR class and in GS. Still just under two hours to go. But I'm going to put an early nomination in for Daniel Morad and his restart uh, that give him the opportunity to fight for and then take the lead. Will that be decisive in the end? I'm not sure but it was a good moment for me in the first half of the race. That's definitely my, my nomination for the, the first half of the race. That double pass round the outside was outstanding off the restart. Really enjoyed that. Here come the TCR. Shea Adam, you've got some business. The Brian Hurd Autosport cars that look alike, i.e. the number 98 and the number one, swap positions between the fast lane and the transition lane so that they can pull into their pit boxes in perfect synchronicity. Really appreciate that teamwork going on. The 33 came in also. That was Robbie Wickens. All of these cars taking fuel only, by the way. The number 91 for, uh, Hyundai that was started by Brian Ortiz, taken over by Tyler Maxson. That car is back out ahead of the factory cars, if you will, or the Brian Hurd cars, I should say. The 17 did come down the pit lane. So Mikey Taylor did want a little bit more fuel from his team. Ah. And the Alpha, as promised, came in. They looked underneath the hood, decided everything was okay for Tim Lewis Jr. and sent him back out. And now we have a driver change from VGRT with their Hyundai. Victor Gonzalez out. And now it is Tyler Gonzalez taking over. Over. But there is such a big ding in the side of the driver's side door that it didn't really want to close on its own, John. Final wave by is getting underway now. Yeah, where did that happen? Um, there's been a bit of contact, but that looked fa fairly substantial, certainly more than what I remember seeing. On that Victor Gonzalez racing team machine. So RS1 stayed out, Turner Motorsports stayed out, Marillo Racing stayed out, so that's you know, we heard the very glum Kenny Marillo earlier on talk to us. I think he was thinking championship there and thinking perhaps they were dropping behind a wee bit. Well, they've rolled the dice on strategy here, Jeremy, and they've got the... Oh, hang on, the Cameron, Stim Cameron Racing, number 43, Redline Oil BMW, has come to a halt uh, with... I don't think there's fire in that BMW engine. Uh, they recycling that car it's Gregory Leofuge behind the wheel 14th position for that machine and dropping down now it going. so the control alt delete clearly worked and a sigh of relief I would have thought Jeremy there from the team on the pit wall you are able to stay on the lead lap then lose quite a bit of track position Oh, was it? Have they fallen the lap off the lead? It might have fallen off the lead lap. Yeah, that's curious because uh, they had been running in fourth position before that round of pit stops. And I think might now have uh, fallen off. No, no, they have. No, that's right. Uh, so, they, yeah, they, they, yeah they, they, they did just uh, stay on the lead lap. So that's good news for them. Uh, the only uh, TCR car that didn't hit was number 15 car, Denny Dupont, uh, for Rockwell Autosport Development. So the Audi will lead at the restart. And um, look, if there's another caution period, uh, it, it could work out in a favour. Uh, I think Shay was saying, did, did any of the TCR cars change tyres there that we know of? I, I don't think. I, no, I don't think so. Say, we'll say, I think not. I think so, that was um, purely the opportunity to put a splash more fuel in and extend the stint. I. I, I, I just wonder if what you were saying earlier, Jeremy, is what Rockwell Auto Development are thinking. With a bit of yellow and where they last stopped, maybe they think they can get to the end with one more stop anyway. So they'll take the track position right now. Um, and even if there's a slight question mark, uh, will there be another yellow? Well, you can't. Uh, plan that that is going to happen but they're going to take their chances and it's been quite a, a long yellow flag period it's uh, been what, the sharp end of 10 minutes already so they've been sailing uh, sailing around saving fuel about 13 minutes I reckon yeah so when was that number 15 car back in the pit lane last that's the 
question. For Danny Dupont. Danny Dupont's been in the car for getting on for a... 64, lap, lap 64, 64, which is when uh, quite a few of those cars yeah. came in there. That was about 64, so six laps before the caution period came out. Well, they might feel that with uh, 13, 14 getting on for 15 minutes by the time we go back to green of caution period. Now, you don't save all of that, but you certainly save a reasonable amount of fuel. It's going to take them a bit closer. So, there, yeah, let's take the track position and, uh, and see how it goes. Denny Dupont on a, a effectively a double stint in the middle of the race here. And we'll have Mark Wilkins breathing down his neck and Tyler Maxson, Taylor Hagler and Mikey Taylor. Hang on, we've got Tyler Maxson, Taylor Hagler and Mikey Taylor all together as well out on the circuit. Are they just doing this to confuse a tired commentator at the end of the day? Safety car lights are out and the Corvette pulls away in a very elegant shade of blue and we are ready to resume racing with one hour and 50, one hour and 50 minutes on the clock and it will be Eric Figueras who comes round to see the green flag, he's controlling the pace of the field coming through turn 14, puts his right foot hard to the floor of that Cayman and immediately goes to the right hand side to defend from Robbie Forley in the Turner Motorsport BMW. Uh, there's a lapped car in there as well, which I'm guessing that is Matt Plum trying to unlap himself, and he hasn't been able to do that. In fact, he's going to lose a track position. Needed to be right up the tailpipes of the leader there and get in front early. And here comes the 72. Christian Simtak down the inside of the 46 Aston. Team TGM, the white, uh, blue and pink car, red car. Yeah, and Elliot Skier right there as well in the number 47 car up into fourth position. A great stop for that NOLA Sport team and that, uh, that yellow and black Porsche in, in outside making contact there with the championship leader as they head into turn seven. And this... Another quick note here, by the way, John. Yeah. Uh, there were two cars that were between um, the where we, who was leading under under yellow. The number 57 car was leading from the number 28 when the yellow came out. Correct. Between those two cars was two GS cars. When the 57 car came into the pit lane, they moved ahead of number 28, but did not stop. So that it was it was that car, number 28, that was picked up by the safety car, and the two cars that got their lap back were Luca Mars in the Core Motorsports 59 Ford and Jerome Blechemol in the GMG Racing Porsche. So they are back on the lead lap. They didn't quite catch up to the tail end of the, of the pack before we went green, but they are back on the lead lap. Yeah, they're both pitted as well, Jeremy. Um, Correct. Um, and uh, that's uh, another reason they didn't catch up to the back of the field, but they are coming through turn 10 now, uh, and it wouldn't take much to imagine that they would be back on. Well, plenty of action after the restart. Let's see who makes the best of this. Fogaras from Forley in second, then Elliot Skier, Christian Simchak for the championship leading 72 car, makes a move and makes a move on Daniel Morad, who's fought his way back up again on the restart. Dives to the inside of the championship leader. This could be interesting going up to turn seven and makes the move very smooth from Daniel Morat. He's so good on the restarts, Jeremy, and yet he doesn't seem to take that much out of his Michelin tyres because we saw how good he was and how consistent he was in the middle and the end of the stint as well. Is this another Shane van Gisbergen? Is, is, have we found the, the answer, the uh, US answer to the, the tyre whisperer that is Shane van Giesbergen and uh, it's Daniel Morad. He's doing a cracking job. He is, isn't he? And uh, this is uh, the, the Mercedes looking pretty good at this stage uh, in the race. Uh, but uh, so we're looking at several other cars as well. It's going to take a, a little while now for the, the race to kind of settle down. We'll see what pace it has because most of the cars now, most of the teams now had their closing drivers at the wheel. And this is a battle to the end from here with an hour and 46 minutes to go. Yeah. Uh, get the popcorn in if you are watching. Coming up to 
at one o'clock in the morning, quarter to one in Europe, quarter to midnight in the UK. Wherever you are watching or listening, thank you for being with us. Hello to Rick Kalisher, who's tuned in, as well as to Marty at the track. Uh, the track later on, he told me, about ten minutes ago. Actually, a bit uh, longer than that. We'll see. The, starting to see the headlights making uh, a little more impact. It is overcast. That threat of rain, thankfully, seems to have dissipated. You can see the headlight shining on the on the pavement of the racetrack now as well. I've got that uh, sort of soft, glistening look from the headlights, which are so bright nowadays, almost as if it's wet. It's not, but that's kind of what it looks like at the moment. Fulgueras has pulled out a second on Robbie Foley. Elliott Skiers just put that car's fastest lap of the race in for yes. Nola Sport, 130.5. That, you know, this is this is now a second quicker than at least that most people were going at the end of the stints, Jeremy. Yeah, really good lap there for uh, Elliot Skier and a great pit stop by that uh, number 47 team. I mean, he came into the pits in the 14th position and left in fourth. That's, that's a pretty impressive effort. In fact, in fact, they came out of ahead of all of the guys. I think they didn't stop. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they moved past everybody else that stopped. The number 47 car moved past. So brilliant work there by uh, by Nola Sport and Elliot Skier is going to take full advantage of that. He's, that's his plan. BMWs side by side, 92, Random Randalls having a go at the 95, Turner Motorsport and Robin Liddell's right in there as well. This could be very tasty indeed. Nice, nice piece of driving by Kenton Cook to get by Cameron Lawrence. That was the battle for ninth position meantime in TCR. The Van der Stur Racing number 91 car, losing a position to Robbie Wiggins and losing third position, in fact, to Robbie Wiggins. Robert coming back through the field and he has established himself there ahead of Tyler Maxson. So it's Denny DuPont who didn't stop by eight seconds now from Mark Wilson, 15 from 98. The Rockwell Audi from the first of two Brian Hurd Autosports car, 98 and 33. Well, those following along and then Van der Stur racing another 1.1 seconds further back in the blue and white Hyundai then Mikey Taylor in the Unitronic JDC car and remember he's had a little bit of extra fuel so he'll be going well into the race the Alpha has the fastest lap of the race in TCR and Tim Lewis is down in fifth position but quite a way off the back uh, of that battle we were talking about. Yeah, and no, no fuel concerns at all for TCRs at this stage in the race. They could easily get to the end on just one more stop. Uh, more of a factor, certainly, though, for GS. Look at this battle. Four here. wide, two BMWs uh, and two uh, Caymans. Are they going to get away with that? Oh, they there's, have. There's Michael Cooper leading on, uh, on the, the uh, number 95 BMW there, Cameron Lawrence. And right behind them is it's, uh, Valentin hasse uh, the Frenchman in that Van der Stur racing Aston Martin. That car's fast, and that was a car that had a penalty a little while ago, and he is right in the thick of this battle for the sort of lower end of the top ten. It's quite extraordinary battle that's going on there at the moment. Accelerated performance of the 44 car is in 11th position, and it's from there on down the battle that Jeremy has uh, just described to you, Robin Liddell, right in that as well. As the restart, I, I, I actually closed my eyes for a moment there. I, I'm going to admit it. Uh, as uh, Ken Cook and uh, was trying to get through that, and he was the car ahead. But there was uh, a bit of billiards going on, automotive billiards going on between the 44 Porsche, turn of BMW and the second of the Porsche is the accelerating performance uh, machine, or the uh, PGP machine, excuse me. And uh, they've done well to get away with that, with an hour and 42 minutes or thereabouts still to go. Now, it, oh, a little bit of a bump and run. And that's the Van der Stur Racing Hyundai that was pushed off by the Victor Gonzalez Racing Hyundai from fourth position, uh, that number... 
at 91, Tyler Maxon, and that's dropped that car two positions down the grid. And uh, it's a bit naughty, actually, for Tyler Gonzalez, because he's a couple of laps. I know he's one lap down from the lead in TCR, but really shouldn't be getting involved in the, the battle at the sharp end of the field, and certainly shouldn't be bumping off at the car that's in a podium position there when they're a lap behind. Very true. Yeah, you've got to re be respectful. If you're a lap down, you've got to be respectful of those other guys who are uh, dicing for positions in front of you, uh, in my view. <laughs> the 99 has, I think, got another improper pass around penalty. I'm just going to check that that has just come in on a, the race control channel. Uh, yep. Yep. And so... It's a stop plus 308, so that's two laps. Uh, also, it is going to be a drive-through. So that's twice for the uh, Victor Gonzalez uh, racing team. Well, that's six and a bit minutes that they've had. Uh, and also a drive-through, only a drive-through, not a stop and hold, for Sally McNulty in the Daily Motorsports Hyundai. Sally was pointing in the right direction for quite a long time down at seven and eight earlier on and that was fire extinguisher improperly manned nothing to do with the driver there so that is just a drive through meantime always worth watching what is going on in the last stints for Robin Liddell and Robin Liddell is in 15th position at the moment he's got Spencer Pompelli right ahead of him yeah and he's not making any progress no, which is not. interesting in fact he's falling back uh, down that little uh, pack of cars. He was uh, 11th only a few laps ago, and now down to 15th. That's curious. Um, just wondering whether he's uh, maybe saving fuel at this stage or something like that. But um, yeah, unlike Robin Liddell to be falling back, particularly uh, as we've seen how fast that, that, that Chevy Camaro uh, can be and is. Yeah, it was a slow lap last time around for him in the 34s. I mean, there's a big pack of cars. I fancy he may, maybe just got shuffled out some in some way, shape or form. I shall ask the team uh, what is going on and uh, find out if we can get an answer. The miracles of electronic communication. Uh, meantime, Daniel Morad uh, focusing forward and focusing forward to the rear of Elliot Skier's Nola Sport Porsche. Wow. <laughs> and uh, and look, uh, uh, Eric Figueres has uh, made himself a little bit scarce at the front of the field, yes. pulling away from this battle. But look who's in second place now. It's Elliot Skier in that Nola Sport uh, BMW. And Robbie Foley, who was in second position, is now back to fourth Yeah, uh, the, uh, with uh, Daniel Morad uh, ahead of them. Yeah, uh, Elliot Skier in the Porsche in second. Uh, and then the Mercedes me, yeah. and then the BMW. Yeah, so that's a bit... That's, uh, those, those three have a bit of a shuffle round on that last lap. If the race was to finish now, uh, the turn of Motorsport number 96 car and the Murillo Racing number 72 would be tied on points at the top of the championship and leaving us with the requirement of having um, all of our fingers and toes in operation at the end of the final race at Motul Petit Le Mans in October. Thank I think we're going to have to do that anyway. Shay Adam down in the pits. It would be easier because Turner has two wins, whereas the 72 only has one. So we don't need to use all of our, our math brain yet. Arithmetic brain, sorry, John. Adam. Yeah, possibly. That is a, that's as it stands, of course. A bit of bumping and boring going on again in that battle in the early teens. Early teens are such a difficult time, aren't they? And... The, uh, it seems to be that uh, nobody's getting away scot-free there. BGB Motorsports, Steam Cameron Racing, Spencer Pompelli, Greg Leofood, uh, and Robin Liddell trying to make hay there. Uh, also in amongst that is Jensen Altman back in the McCombie McAleer at number 13 Ford. That's the mostly white car. So the Reardon uh, Cayman, the multicoloured car, uh, and uh, the BGB motorsports machine from Stephen Cameron racing in the number 43 uh, blue and tangerine bright orange car oh bit of 
and damage to the back of that car as well. Also, John, the other the other Stephen Cameron car, the older car, number 77, Pete Mercier has taken over the wheel of that car from uh, from Nick uh, uh, Schaefer, who drove the first. It drove a really good first. He, he was really quick. And Pete, uh, who has I haven't seen his name uh, for a long, long time, but he used to race uh, Atlantic cars back in the day and and uh, Russell Series, all that sort of stuff. A lot of West Coast racing. He's quick. Uh, and he's showing it because he's uh, he's hanging on to this trade of cars, which includes Robin Nadell and his teammate there, uh, Gregory Leofuge, who's got a massive amount of experience in these cars. So and actually uh, closing up on all of them is uh, Neil Verhagen uh, in uh, kind of a 26. That's the fast track race in BMW. He made a pit stop, uh, I think, after everybody else did. Uh, and he's just said his best lap of the race, uh, trying to chase down this little group. Neil, who's been, been doing sterling work for the BMW junior team in the Nürburgring Endurance Series. Uh, good to see him here in the US. Uh, another penalty for the number 99 uh, Victor Gonzalez racing team. Remember they've got the stop and uh, three minutes odd seconds uh, and then there'll be a drive through for the uh, incident responsibility for the hit that we saw uh, a few minutes ago and described to you on the, it was the Van der Stur Racing uh, Elantra, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Tyler Max in the number 91 car. Uh, meantime, Robin Liddell has cleared that little group of cars now, so uh, clearly stung by Jeremy Shaw <laughs> and pointing out he'd lost a couple of positions. The uh, car, and I'm hearing from the team that uh, there is a bit of fuel saving going on, but Robin trying to keep his nose clean as well and so he's pulled up a, a couple of positions uh, and got ahead of certainly the Stephen Cameron racing car I think hasn't he yeah uh, and so he will next time around be scored a little bit further up the field still impressed with what's going on at the front of the field and there was a little bit of in that battle a little bit of hip and shoulder from Jensen Oldsman uh, on to the number 21 uh, Porsche and that might get the attention of the uh, which is of, a lap down uh, Vesco, ah yes, Vesco Kozarov uh, in the Reardon racing car yes, that uh, that was confusing me a little bit that car, so that has been bottling of cars behind it uh, and possibly not adhering to the fact not noticing the fact there's been blue flags being waved at every opportunity added oh. Okay. Well, in the meantime, uh, Elliot Skier is uh, uh, beginning to make some ground now toward Eric Filgeris, uh, who leads this race. Uh, the gap between first and second has been halved over the last five laps, it's now 1.4 seconds. A uh, similar gap back to Daniel Murad in third, Robbie Foley in fourth, ditto. And then a biggish gap back to Jeff Westfall, who's moved himself up to fifth place in that number 39 Carbon BMW, uh, who has uh, overtaken the number 72 uh, Marilla racing Mercedes. Actually, he, Christian Schimjack has also been overtaken by Scott Andrews. So he's fallen a couple of positions in the last couple of laps. It's Jeremy Shaw, who's with me, John Hindorf, and Shea Adam, our eyes and ears in the pit lane and into the pit lane for a couple of chapters of War and Peace comes VGRT's Hyundai and Shea's just said needs to focus on the peace part of that actually that was just the drive through so have they actually served their long stationary lap uh, I think they have yeah have done that's been cleared and they've dropped uh, another couple of laps away from the TCR lead. Just coming down to an hour and a half to go. At the front of TCR, Denny Dupont for Rockwell Auto Development by just over five against from two Brian Herder Autosports Alandras, Mark Wilkins in the 98, the standard coloured car, then the yellow and white Rob Wiggins, number 33. Another two seconds ahead of the Unitronics, that's another yellow, white and black number 17 but that's an Audi now into uh, fourth position ahead of 
Taylor Hagler in fifth in the number one Elantra. Then Tyler Maxson for Van der Sturz Racing in an Elantra. And then 31 seconds further back, Tim Lewis in seventh position in the KMW Motorsports Alpha. Just working out whether he's still on the lead lap. I think he's the last of the TCRs on the lead lap. Not been a banner day for Victor Gonzalez Racing Hyundai number 99. At the front of the field, GS. Now just one second between Daniel Morad and uh, Elliot Skier as Daniel disposed with Eric Figueras uh, a lap or so ago and has gone off again in uh, pursuit of the leader. It's been a fantastic couple of stints by Daniel Morad from the very moment that it went green after he got into the car at the previous uh, end of the previous uh, safety car period, Jeremy. Yeah, so what happened to... Yeah, right. So I, I missed that. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. So Elliot Skier then leads the race, doesn't he, uh, from Daniel Morad. Uh, for for Garris, all of a sudden, they're down to third. He had been uh, slipping back just a little bit, but I wasn't expecting those changes uh, to take place that, that, that suddenly. Well, and, and this is what we saw in the the early stint, the earlier stint, wasn't it? That Figueras uh, was very consistent, uh, and he's back out of the 31, uh, the 31 nines again, Jeremy. Whereas, yeah. you know, Elliot Ski is doing a 30, 30.8, 31.3 for Daniel Mora. Daniel Mora just reeled off a whole load of 31 flats. Uh, in the middle to the end of the previous stint. That, that's good pace from Elliot Skier for Nola Sport, though, a 30.8 at this stage uh, yeah. of, of the race. That's pretty impressive. It is, but that's the pace that Vergaris was doing up until a couple uh, of laps indeed ago. Indeed so. And, uh, it was just that two laps ago. I don't know what happened to him. I didn't see it. Uh, maybe I was just looking at the scoring instead of the screen, but uh, I didn't see what happened to Vergaris uh, to, to lose that time. He all of a sudden, he had a, a woman ah. at 34, lost him a couple of seconds. Well, the skier just doing a great job in this Nola Sport car. I mean, Adam Allison's first uh, extended stint was excellent. And now uh, Elliot Skier, it's great to see this young guy. I mean, he was a, he was an emerging talent, wasn't he? What, I don't know, seven or eight years ago yeah. now, probably. I was pretty much out of the sport, it seemed like. Uh, but he had been coaching and bringing, helping other people uh, get their way into the sport. And, and coaching it amongst his clients was Adam Adelson and uh, he, we, we heard him talk about it earlier on what a, a partnership they have now and it's great to see someone like Elliot Ski who's worked really really hard uh, to create opportunities for himself now he's uh, 28 years of age nowadays from Carlsbad in Southern California just a really hard worker really good guy oh big spin for the 77 Cameron Lawrence BMW right up on the High side, Peter Mercier, uh, and that F82 BMW is right amongst all of the rubber marbles up there. Now, did he get a little tap there as he now turns that car around and gets a pointing in the right direction? Well, that was a big, scary moment uh, as he slid up onto the banking coming through to turn 12. Uh, he wasn't close proximity and there was a little touch uh, it's the 88 Aston Martin that was in there I think that's going to be a penalty as well yeah and Billy Johnson needs uh, a lot of laps down that was completely unnecessary <sighs> completely un I'm, I'm, I'm astonished that somebody of Billy Johnson's experience would would uh, put his nose there where it clearly didn't belong that wasn't a battle for position in any way that's a fast corner and you've got to say that it looked to me as though Messier was just on the racing line. Yes, yeah. he was turning down, but that's the racing line, Jeremy. Yeah, plus he's on the lead lap, and Billy Johnson is how many laps down is he? Um, 12. Yeah. That's, that's, yes, that's it's not what you expect from someone like Billy Johnson. That's a, that's a bit of a shocker there. Big one. Yeah, I agree. And it's uh, out. Australian counterparts would say that was entirely average and Billy now off the track as well he's overdriving that car and, and and why you've got to ask yourself why Jeremy is he safe you're 12 
12 laps down. Yeah, OK, it's an extended test session. You want to do the best you can, but I'm not sure you want to be doing that. We, we just had the uh, uh, number 10 off as well. Uh, that was at turn one, so that was just a bit of a, a run on for uh, that car. The first time we've called its number today, in fairness. And uh, that's Alex Rockwell's car. In fact, I think that car has stopped in the... Uh, I think that car stopped in the runoff at Turn 1. I'll try and get that confirmed for you. Uh, with a bit of luck, it will have gone far enough straight on at Turn 1 that it's behind the, the barrier, and therefore we can continue to race. The incident involving Billy Johnson and Peter Mercier under investigation. Let's see what that one comes through at. Let's check the situation in TCR. Denny DuPont, Rockwell Auto of Development's Audi. Nearly seven seconds ahead of Mark Wilkins, who's got his teammate Robert Wiggins behind him. The two, Brian Hurd at Autosport, the standard Hyundai N. Uh, colours with the eggshell blue and red dark blue on the hind quarters of that car but the new for this race yellow and white this is the car that reminds us about their fundraising and they've led around about half the 91 laps that have been completed in TCR so that's four and a half thousand dollars that they've raised for racing for children's uh, and that's a great effort uh, from the team and uh, from Hyundai Yeah, really fascinating to see uh, the, the relative pace of two leaders right now. Once again, it's that uh, number 47 car and the uh, number uh, 57. Um, so it's it's a, a Porsche and a Mercedes, just a different Porsche up there now. Uh, earlier on, it was number 28 car that was running pretty much in lockstep with number 57. Uh, but now uh, the 47 car has leapfrogged both of them and into the leader's race. We've got an hour and 23 minutes remaining. A and turn stop for Robbie Foley. Yeah, now th this is this is not good because he can't get to the well, end from here, is it? Uh, no, he can't get to the end from here. Correct. It will be one more stop after this. So what's the tactic here? Shea Adam is watching. This is the car with the yellow bonnet, the yellow hood. 95 has got the white hood, comes to a stop. This one's one that's more important for the championship because this is the one that is fighting for the championship. So maybe they're trying to make sure that they're extra safe and doing two stops to make it to the end of the race, but also into the pit lane, the people they're fighting in the championship. That would be the number 72, Marillo Racing Mercedes. That car coming in for fuel and sticker tires. It is fuel for Turner. I did not see tires going on that BMW. Did you, John? Yeah. The other thing yeah, that they got we tires. need to keep an eye on, Oh, they did. Okay. Well, then, wow. Great job by Turner. Up on the wall, RS1. They are bringing El Eric Fulgaris into the pit lane. And since they did not stop during the yellow, I think they've done one pit stop fewer than everyone else. Uh, yes, you are correct. It might have only been left-hand side tyres for Turner. You might want to uh, to check that out, Shea. And he gets out behind the Stephen... Uh, the Cameron Lawrence, excuse me, BMW, which has just rejoined. That's the Stephen Cameron Racing, sorry. Um, Peter Mercier car, I'm combining about five different people there uh, in one things. Uh, and so that's an interesting one because both those cars fighting for the championship, the number 72 Marillo Racing car uh, and the BMW of Robbie Foley will need to stop one more time. Christian Simchak just leaving the pit. Now, expect to see RS1 and Figueras come in this time around. Jeremy. Yeah, and, uh, good, good point, that. Uh, what I neglected to mention earlier on, the number 47 car leapfrogging its way towards the front. That car did not stop under the caution period. So apologies for that. I, I zoned on that. Number 28, 96, 47... Uh, and uh, 26 did not stop during that pre previous caution period. So uh, that is uh, that is why they're coming onto the pit lane now. 
Michael Cooper accelerating performance multicolored Porsche in the pit lane and a sticker set of Michelin slick tyres going on there. Just trying to work out. I think Robbie Foley got past Christian Simchak in that pit lane. He was way ahead of him already. Simchak had fallen quite a long way back. And ah, he, was, right. he seemed to be struggling in that number 72 car. He'd fallen back at several positions. Yeah, they must have, because of the pit, because of where they are in the pit, Simchak was scored ahead of Robbie Foley at the oh. end of the lap when they came in. But that's that's the relative points in the pit lane. That's, right. that's what uh, caught me out. Yeah. Got to sort of keep an idea, a 3D map in your head of where everybody's pitted, haven't you? When you've got yeah. the uh, the start-finish line in the middle of the pits. Here comes Adek Figueras then from what was third position. The Porsche Naples supported number 28 for RS1 in that uh, dark grey and green. And Shea Adam is watching this came and come to a halt at its pit stop. Standing right in front of the car and he Fueler jumps up on the bumper as they do with these Caymans, the 718s are CSRS. They have plugged the fuel nozzle in, already changing the left side tires. This will be a four sticker tire stop for Stephen Macklear to take it to the checkered flag. He will need to come back in one more stop and they do still have another set of brand new Michelins for him when he does that. Change is done on the left side. They run around to begin the tire change on the right side. The right front taking a little bit longer than the right rear, but they stay calm and cool and collected. Still waiting on the fuel, so not, no time has been lost as of yet. The air hose is out, waiting for the final lug nut to be secured. Now it is. Car drops off the air jack. Fueler is still on the hood, so not losing any time. Where are the leaders? There is the 96 Turner Motorsport BMW going by. And away goes Stephen Mackey. Chase is well and truly on. It's a good stop there, and the key part of that, as Shea said, was although they had a problem on the right front, they didn't panic. They're not losing any time whilst the fuel hose is still on. Get it right. Uh, get it right. Oh, Billy Johnson's got away with one. No action for that uh, incident uh, with Peter Mercier in the number 77 Steve Cameron Racing BMW. Must have felt that Mercier had pulled down on the Aston Martin. Yeah, I, I can understand the call. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can. But, um, but when, you, when you're 12 laps down uh, and dicing with the guys on the lead lap, what's the point in sticking your nose in there and, and slowing him up? Uh, that's what I don't get. I can understand why the penalty wasn't called. It wasn't anything that, that he... He didn't just drill him no. uh, going into a braking zone or anything like that. He, uh, and it's fair comment that Pete Mercier should probably have realised the car was overlapping or almost overlapping on the inside as he clipped that, that, that fast apex. But you, I mean, you're right to ask the question, what was Billy Johnson thinking there? Yeah, there wasn't really much point in doing that with a note thing. But uh, so we've now got the two leaders uh, out in front of the battle here, farther down the field. So, great, so what a great race this, uh, this has been so it's far. Been we've the, still got an hour and 18 to go. There's been these battle packs that keep forming up. Um, normally, when they're getting up to TCRs now, we've got the this could be interesting because we've just had some yeah. pit stops uh, well, for yeah. the cars. And here in the gravel, Sally McNulty for the Daily Motorsports. TCR team and she ooh, uh, front wheels in the gravel that's turn nine and I'm not sure if she's getting out of there unless she very carefully engages reverse and keeps the revs right down but that has buried itself uh, a little bit uh, and pit stops have started so the pit wall have seen this Elliot Skier with with Fuel and tyres, in comes the Mia McLaren for Alex Filsiger. Shea Adam is watching that one. They're doing a driver change back to Jesse Lazar to take this car to the end. Fuel and four new tyres also in before anything happens because we are still green. There is finally signs of life at the 95 Turner Motorsport BMW. There is fuel. There are four tyres. Well, they've got left side tyres right now. Actually, I don't see right side. No left sides only. That gives us our confirmation of what they did on the 96. But finally, Robert McGinnis to support the number 95 Turner Motorsport BMW. Hero stint from Cameron Lawrence to kick this thing off. Uh, this is a good time to pit. 
with uh, the guys in the shop on the field and full course yellow oh, is wow. out now this wow. there's, there's a huge difference in strategy here jeremy so wow. this 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 is really interesting this has really thrown yeah. the proverbial feline uh, uh, into the uh, aviary hasn't it it has, John, and the reason for that is not everybody had an opportunity to come into the pits yeah. after that car was off the road, I don't think. Uh, the number 47 car, I think, was coming in. Well, that came in It came in just before, didn't it? Correct. Uh, that car came into the pits. Well before, so yeah. The, num the number 57, number 27, 92, 39 uh, and 19 didn't have an opportunity to the pit. Most of the cars behind that did, but the top uh, four or five didn't. And uh, that's uh, unfortunate for them, for sure. The question big, is... Big break for those that did pit. Yeah, I mean, the, the question is where they've pitted for the top uh, cars in GS. They still need one more stop before the end. So the question will be those that didn't pit, can they eke out far enough to just do one more pit stop towards the end? Have they got 20 minutes in the tank? Uh, and, and that, I'm not sure they have, to be honest. It'll depend how long this Lazare uh, uh, has just left the pit lane. It, okay. Yeah. Um, oh yes, true. That's one card. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I did notice a couple of the TCRs stopping as well, including Robert Wiggins and the leader, uh, Rockwell Autosports Development car, the number 15 of Danny Dupont. So that was interesting. Mikey Taylor also came in in the number 17 Unitronic car. That's left Mark Wilkins, who didn't stop, out in the lead from Taylor Hagler, who didn't stop in second place. And uh, An hour of 14 is a bit much to ask for the TCDR cars. But if you've brimfilled those cars and there's another yellow, you could roll yeah. the dice and not come in. And, and that's well, what they're thinking, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think they can, they can, an hour 15 with this pit stop now, it's going to be a lengthy caution period. We're going to have to go through all the uh, pit sequence of uh, open and close. It's going Pass to be a 15-minute yeah. yellow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if, if you're really frugal from here on, those guys that just made a stop might be able to stretch it to the end. And I'll tell you what, uh, number 15 card, that Rockwell All Sport Development team, they've called the strategies again uh, perfectly so far in this race. So we'll see whether it can continue in that vein. They were still leading, I think, weren't they, came, before they came into the pits? So. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting indeed. Even if you do have to stop, of course, again, those who've just stopped, you'll need slightly less fuel. You follow the cars in that uh, need to go to the end and you splash and they're going to take more time on fuel so you know getting in is always good i think and you take that here it's not always the same depending on the rules and regulations so let's see who does come in from the front of the field the windward car has been out for how long oh a long time 40 laps but there's a this is the second part of yellow for Daniel Morad. So yeah, that was the uh, that was the first of the cars that did pit uh, mm. during that previous caution period. I'll tell you what, Jeremy. Whilst we've got the yellow, let's nip down to Shea Adam. We've been following this uh, outstanding uh, program initiative from Hyundai to donate some money for every lap led uh, uh, in the race in the TCR race from Hyundai. Here's some more details on it from a man who knows all about it and cares very much about it as well, Shay. Paul Imhoff, the director of marketing for Hyundai Motors America. Welcome to the racetrack, first and foremost. Thank you for bringing such a great livery and for bringing so much attention to this. Talk a little bit about the initiative and why you guys are involved. Yeah, well, it was the 25th anniversary for a Hyundai Hope on Wheels. And so we, we had to come here with the new livery. And, uh, you know, with that, we're, like he was saying, donating $100 for every lap led. So we're doing really well there. Giving it to uh, Riley's Children's Hospital here locally. So it's really good. Then there's the story behind the 33, which is my son's number. So, and he passed away from pediatric cancer. So it's a lot, a lot of emotion here. But, uh, you know, Hyundai's great and Brian Hurd is doing well. So 
Rudin number 33 for sure. It's also cool that they've chosen to put a name on the car as well to represent a patient. So it, it's got to pull at everyone's heartstrings. And talk about this initiative going forward. This livery is going to be on the car at the next race too. Yeah, it'll be it'll be on the race car for the rest of the season. You know, we've got Rainy here that uh, you probably talked to, but she's she's great. She's our best. Hope on wheels, and yeah, we're just going to keep going with Hope on wheels for as long as we can. And how many laps do we think we can lead by the end of the season to donate? I hope, I hope a lot. I hope a lot. It's going to be great. Any championship incentive? If they win the championship, maybe there's an additional donation? Uh, we've got to talk about that. That's cool. <laughs> thank you. Hey, very nice to meet you. Good luck for the rest of the race. Hey, thank you very much. But, and they led a, a lap of the race overall as well, Shea. So you've got to tell Paul about that and uh, make sure we get a bit extra money into that excellent cause. GS Pit Stops starting. Morad in for Winwood. Carbon uh, and the 39 uh, BMW in. Uh, Robin Liddell in. Uh, Scott Andrews for Lone Star in. Kenton Cook for Random Vandals in. Van der Stur in. BGB in for Spencer Pumpelli, Luca Mars for Core, GMG, Jerome Bleakamall and Robbie Foley staying out. Neil Verhagen for Fast Track, Jensen Oldsman for McCumby McAleer Racing and Elliot Skier, remember, he just made that stop before this. They have stayed out. Shay, in terms of driver changes, etc., what's going on on the pit lane? I've just seen new tires going on to both the Random Vandals BMW, Ken Cook staying aboard for them, and for Scott Andrews and the Mercedes for Lone Star Racing. I did not see, yes, they did do tires for Rebel Rock. I see that now. So that means that Robin Liddell has some fresh rubber to go out there and play with. But this should work out perfectly for both Elliot Skier and Stephen McAleer, who made pit stops shortly before the yellow came out. They should cycle to the front. Wasn't the quickest stop from Rebel Rock, but they did do, do four tyres. Um, an hour and nine as they come back out, Jeremy. And that uh, is going to be tight, but we've seen Robin Liddell think back to Sebring a couple of seasons ago. Robin can put his uh, driving slippers on and still make good lap times. Uh, and I'm not counting him out at the moment. That's a whole heap of cars that have come in all the way down to GMG Racing and uh, yeah. Jerome Blake and just coming back out. Yeah, there are three cars on the lead lap that did not pit. So number 26 of Neil Verhagen, uh, Jensen Oxman in car number 13, and Elliot Skier, who had pitted right just before, before the caution period out. Uh, when Shea was talking there about Robert McGinnis, uh, Jesse Lazare, and the other and uh, whoever else came in just before the caution period, they got trapped a lap down. So they'll get their lap back now. Yeah. As the, uh, the as Stephen McAleer was one of those. The RS1 Indeed car. Indeed, he was. Yeah. That's exactly right. So it hasn't worked out. Uh, particularly well for them because they will be behind will be behind all those other cars that are making their pit stop now right tcr stops here and this is second time into the pit lane for some of them including the 33 robert wiggins car they will just take a splash of fuel here i think what's going on elsewhere that's exactly it for the 33 they wanted to make sure they got every drop of fuel into the car so now robert wiggins already back out and rolling as is the number 15 for rockwell autosport they just did a splash of fuel too we've got two new tires for the hyundai uh, excuse me for the alpha as well as a drinks bottle change for tim lewis that was roy block coming over to refresh so front tires only for the alpha four tires for the 91 vanderster hyundai and we've got left side tires for the daily motorsports car that has made it in i think that was the 70, uh, not this the uh, Sally McNulty car. We also had the 98 and the 1. Brian heard of Autosport Hyundai's in. The 98 was the first car onto the pit lane. It was one of the last ones to leave. I think they've done four tire stops for both the 98 and the 1. But let me follow up with them just to make sure. Okay. Game on, as they say. Yeah. Game on, yeah. Jeremy. Yeah, so all these uh, cars now that are in between the uh, the race leader or the safety car, excuse me, and the uh, and the class leader, and there's quite a few of the uh, GS cars in that they they will get the the uh, pass around through, through uh, past the safety car and come, come run around to the back of the pack, and it will be Neil Verhagen, uh, the BMW Junior team driver who leads this race at the restart. Jensen Holtzman now taking an opportunity to come into the pit lane, so presumably he missed that call to come in on the last time around, because that's going to drop him right to the tail of the pack in car number 13. 
instead of uh, second position as he was would have been behind Neil Verhagen. I think it's going to be Chad getting back into that car, coming into the pit lane. That's confirmed from Sheer Adam. At IMSA Radio, just over an hour to go, and this is boiling up nicely. It's going to be a new set of Michelin tyres for the McCombie Macalea racing for Mustang. Jensen Altman getting out of that car also in the pit lane, but much further down. Vesco Kozarov. Uh, has news from the pit lane that has nothing to do uh, with what's going on with those two cars and everything to do with what might happen later. It's raining quite a lot on my head right now. Um, the McCombie McElroy car has actually just shut the engine off and the hood is up. They're taking this opportunity to add some more fluid while they have a moment behind the safety car, but also springing up onto the wall, the pit board for the number 95 Turner Motorsport BMW along with a bunch of mechanics. So it uh, looks like a bit of oil maybe being added to the Ford. That's curious. Um, but they've got the opportunity because, of course, if they went to the pit exit anyway, safety car is not yet back around. So they've got a moment. So why as well do it? That was a new uh, air filter going in on the left-hand side, and I think that might have been brake fluid that was going in on the right-hand side. I, I'm afraid I, I, I don't, because I, I really should know, but I, I don't know the en engine architecture uh, in the front end of that Mustang. Um, apologies for that, but that it, it might have been oil, but it... it, it uh, Looked like it was going into a brake reservoir to me. Um, if someone knows better, please let me know. It is the Tyrac.com weekend, and this is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway 240 for the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge. We've got the dash to the flag coming at just over an hour in the second of two four-hour races. First one at the Rolex 24 Daytona, and going into the darkness in around about half an hour's time. It uh, will be officially sunset. And after that, in about 10 minutes, it will be quite dark here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Already the headlights and taillights of the cars on track and of some of the vehicles moving around on the infield are becoming more, more obvious, as are the lights around the circuit. And again, I'm going to make this point. This is a circuit that does not get driven on in the dark ordinarily. So do not expect super speedway NASCAR style lights. This is much more Sebring pools of light rather than uh, great swathes and sheets of lights. Let's uh, reset for you before we go back to green. TCR, Mikey Taylor leads for Unitronic. The pool center back on top after some smart work and smart tactics from the Unitronic JDC Miller Motorsport team. Robert Wiggins, see above comment. They came in just before the uh, yellow flag came out, so they needed just a splash and they jumped everybody else in the pit lane. Back up to second place for that TCR, number 33, the Hyundai. Third, it's another Audi. Rockwell Auto Developments again. Denny Dupont took the opportunity to come in just before the yellow was called uh, and uh, runs now in third position behind the safety car. Mark Wilkins, the number 98. Hyundai is fourth, fifth. Tim Lewis Jr. for KFW Motorsports. Uh, and that's the Alpha number five. Top six made up by Tyler Maxson in the number 91. Van der Stur Racing. Hyundai Elantra might as well go down to seventh because that is another car that is on the lead lap, yes, in TCR. Uh, the first lap uh, lap car uh, car off the lead lap in TCR is the Hart Honda, the number 89. Now at the front of the field, very interesting. Fast track racing. Neil Verhagen are leading behind the safety car, with Elliot Skier in second for Nola Sport and Daniel Morad for Mercedes AMG and Winwood Racing. 26, 47, 57, the top three. And they're just crossing the line now with Scott Andrews for Lone Star Racing in the 27 Mercedes next up. Then Kenton Cook in a very quick 
BMW, the random vandals, green and white car, the number 92. Then Jeff Westfall in six, in the number 39, Peregrine, car bomb by Peregrine, BMW, the debut of that car for that team. Valentin has a clot for van der Stur Racing uh, and the Vantage. And that is the number 19 and the top 10 made up by Robbie Foley in the number 96 Turner Motors book car. That's the one with the yellow hood. Uh, ninth, Robin Liddell, Rebel Rock Racing, starting much further up, restarting much further up the field than the last uh, time. So that's a net gain for that car. And the top 10 made up by Court Motorsports and Ford Mustang, the number 59. Also on the lead lap, BGB, GMG, and Turner Motorsports, RS1 McAleer, uh, Stephen Cameron Racing, the Mia McLaren, and Christian Simchak as well. And back into the pit lane, McCumbie McAleer Racing, Shea Adam. Um, not, uh, uh, was I right? Was that brake fluid or were you right and it was engine oil? Oh, it's so hard for me to say this without a giant smile on my face now. Sorry, John, I was right. Um, it was engine oil and a filter, so you got the filter part of that one, right? Um, okay. But they just came back in to top up because they were focused on topping up with the two liters of oil. So they were topping off fuel in this last stop, yeah? Yep, A firm. Okay, okay, thank you. Right. An hour to go, Jeremy. Yeah, exactly. An hour, An hour to, to go. go. Yeah, so the TCRs... Uh, should be uh, should be good to, to go just about a bit of a stretch but they should be good to go the T gs no everybody else in gs is going to have to stop uh, between now and the end of this race uh, the, the guy that's going to need uh, more fuel than anybody else is the guy who's leading it yeah. right now but uh, he's going to enjoy himself out in front of a, a race in the u.s that hasn't happened for neil Great in flag. a long 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 time Green flag, and we are back to racing the field. Charge down to the first corner. Neil Verhagen already under pressure from Elliot Skier. And behind, there's a huge dive down the inside, and that isn't going to work. How was there not a massive accident there for Daniel Morat? We know how good he is on the restarts. Was that Morat? Yes, it was. I think so. That car steaming down the inside. Uh, just checking to see that that was indeed the 57 car of Windward Racing. It was either him or 27, I think. Correct. It was 57, wasn't it? Uh, but he, he'd done his homework and he knew exactly where to go. Oh, did he ever? And he only He's still there. Of seconds. Uh, we've got a drive through, drive through incident responsibility for the number 39, Jeff Westfall, Carbone. Uh, with Peregrine, that was for incident responsibility with the number 70, the Sally McNulty car. That's how it ended up in the gravel. Interesting. And also for the... Too many people on working on the car as well. Who is that for? Uh, that's the number 74 car. OK, that is uh, not in the battle at the front of the field. That was a huge dive down the inside. <laughs> Wasn't going to work. By the way, the the, the multicoloured Porsche that's battling with Neil Verhagen for the lead, that car is a lap, lap down. down. Michael Cooper trying to get his lap back. Yeah, absolutely. But and it was. Skier has taken advantage and now leads the race. And confirming that was Daniel Morad, but uh, uh, almost amazingly, uh, Morad still in, I think, third place. Yes, yeah, still in third place. So, uh, extraordinary. Uh, yeah, not much of a deterrent, is it? Well, uh, was he just trying to scare everybody else off the track? <laughs> not entirely certain. But he's right in he's behind Neil Verhagen. Let's uh, find out what that penalty was all about for Car Barn. This is with the drive through for the instant responsibility with the TCR number 70, Cher. Yeah? which is actually coming down the pit lane now, is that number 70, Hyundai. Uh, it slammed on the brakes at the apex of the corner, and Jeff Westfall had nowhere to go, so they were arguing with race control, was Carbon with Peregrine Racing, saying, we couldn't avoid this. It wasn't right. avoidable contact. It shouldn't have been a penalty in their opinion. OK. Uh, and Jeff Westfall staying out there at the moment. He has not yet come into the pit lane. Um, we just had the Stephen McAleer RS1 car in the pit lane. I presume, sure that was just for uh, a bit of fuel to help them get to the end? 
That's exactly what it was. They splashed the car and they can put Steven McAleer in full-fledged fuel save mode and try and make it to the end of the race. And wow. guess who else is going to go with that strategy? The Mia McLaren has their pit board wave in. They're going with the exact same thing. Looks like Carbon with Perrigan have lost their uh, argument, discussion, strong debate uh, with race control. Uh, Jeff Westfall comes in down the pit lane as the Artura, as Shea mentioned, Jesse Lazar comes in to the pit lane as well. This, Jeremy, is really building up. We've got all kinds of strategies going on, uh, particularly at the sharp end of the field. I'm loving this. Yes, yeah, brilliant. It's been a great race, hasn't it? All the way through uh, from now. And uh, in TCR, it's the same. We've got the Mikey Taylor. That car started on the pole position mm. and runs uh, second right with the uh, leading car, the championship leader, Robert Wickens. But Denny Dupont yeah. is right there in third position uh, as well. So and that's a change uh, since the restart, Jeremy, because Mikey Taylor started uh, behind... Uh, started ahead of Robert Wickens. So Wickens... Uh, I don't think he did. Yes, he did, because I remember reading it down. Uh, it was the That's seven. Where I wrote it down. Right. Okay. Because uh, I actually said uh, the 17 back at the front. So <laughs> they were the ones who splashed, remember, uh, as well. So that's how they got to the front. Uh, and so th they, they'd be going full chat to the end. Uh, Denny uh, Dupont, the same in that Rockwell car. They all came in just before the yellow came out. Now we've got a race on our hands. And this has been boiling up rather nicely. Kenton Cook finding some pace as well at the sharp end of the field. Just put the fastest lap in for the round. And Van, the 131.036, and backs it up with the 131.5. He is in third position uh, and just two seconds away from the lead. Remember, Daniel Moran has the fastest lap of the race on a 130.2, and he was a 30.8 that time around as he closes to within one second of the leader lovely yeah tremendous fun this is i mean and we've got uh you know, porsche mercedes a couple of bmws another mercedes and an aston martin advance and i say chloe and don't count him out because uh, he, we know how quick he is he's well not many people in this country know how quick he is perhaps but he's been affiliated with the aston martin brand now for for a number of years he's like many uh, youngsters started out in in the open wheel ranks but got the opportunity to move into sports cars uh, and has uh, carved out a nice little career for himself, uh, mainly in Europe, but gets the occasional opportunity over here and Van der Stur Racing giving him a chance to drive that car. And after the penalty that car had, what, an hour and a half ago, probably now, uh, Valentin has got that car up into the sixth position in car number 19. Yeah, it's been a good uh, recovery drive for a number of people. Just hearing the chirp of the race gates on the TCR cars as they're wound up to the max now to the end of the race. Tim Lewis right with Mark Wilkins. That's a battle for fourth and fifth in TCR. The 98 Hyundai, the light blue and red machine in front of the dark coloured uh, dark coloured Alpha. Uh, 53 minutes to go. And, and with this overcast, Jeremy, it is getting darker quicker than it did uh, yesterday yeah. evening. Yeah, it is. I mean, the good news is they don't have the sun to contend with like they did yesterday yeah. night with that sun setting of the grandstand in, in Speedway Turn 1. So that's the good news. Uh, and a very good news, actually, because it would make things really, really tricky. But I tell you what, once it gets dark around here, um, race, well, I think race control is going to have a particularly tough time because it's not easy to tell which car is which. And uh, I fancy there might be some uh, pushing and shoving going on. Because uh, everybody wants to win this race. Denny Dupont has just taken second position from Mikey Taylor around the outside, going down to turn seven. Nice bit of driving. And so now it's Wiggins for Hyundai and Brian Hurt at Autosport. Clocking up more money, going to the Hyundai charity drive, literally. So Dupont in second, Taylor in third. Uh, Spencer Papelli has just brought number 83 car into the pit lane. Uh, 52 minutes remaining. He can get to the end from here, yeah. uh, I'm sure. So I think uh, he uh, is the first uh, to blink. Uh, I think that's the first car yes. that can get to the end from here without any massive fuel save. 28 car, very doubtful. Uh, and, and in any case, they're a lap 
they're uh, on a lap down and not quite, no. but uh, a long way out of contention at this stage. Look, look at the lap times from the leaders, Jeremy Elliott Ski has just put the fastest lap of that Porsche's race in uh, as he is clearly being told to get the hammer down uh, from the team. Kenton Cook uh, in third, Dale Verhagen in fourth, a 30.8 last time around. So these guys have been told to get the hammer down and push on as hard as they can. And I, that suggests to me that they will come in and splash. Spencer Pumpelli might have just... Oh, everybody needs to pit, John. Yeah, yeah. All uh, the GS cars need to pit. I, I, I just think Spencer Pumpelli has, has knocked the domino now. Let's yes. see Let's see how, who follows and, and what happens. And it. Yeah, because if there's a full course caution now, everybody else is going to have to come in and he's going to be out front. So anybody... Uh, anybody staying out at this stage is, is kind of gambling a little bit. Oh, Jesse Lazar's just put the fastest lap of the whole race in for the Mia McLaren. A 130.035. Michael Cooper for the Porsche Accelerating Performance puts that car's fastest lap of the race in. And Neil Verhagen has come into the pit lane. Uh, put his fastest lap in as he came in. Wow, that is, that is some lap for Neil Verhagen but the fast track racing BMW into the pit lane as well and here it is then this is going to be the last scheduled pit stops 55 minutes to go on the nose and the GS cars can do about 52 53 minutes so here here is the strategy playing out now Jeremy of who goes first Shear down at the McLaren pit for motorsport in action. I said, so no fuel conservation going on, huh? And Eric said, right now, no. But if he keeps going at this pace, we might be a bit short. <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good. But at the moment, that car is a lap off the lead, I think. No, it's not. No, it's not. Right no, on the end of the lead lap. lap. Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was trying to add that. Oh, we've got some bodywork right in the middle of the start finish straight. Uh -huh. And that is a whole rear clip. And it's a full course yellow. It has to be. It's the 79 car that has had the problem, the Ford. Uh, and it has lost a whole bunch of bodywork. Now, people were diving into the pits there. I'm not sure they got in. Uh, Neil Verhagen got into the pits beforehand and Tyler Maxson got into the pits beforehand. But Tyler, I think, is a lap off the pace, yes, in the 91 car. So he's he's uh, not a contender. None of the leading contenders in either of the classes was able to get in before that caution period came out. This is the NV Autosport for Mustang Drew Neubach. Uh, and the whole of the bumper cover at the back has fallen off. Now, that is a big piece of carbon fiber reinforced plastic but also the car is uh, dangling the uh, dangling the under tray which is sparking uh, as well as it goes through suggests that car's had a, a bit of a whoopsie somewhere wow yeah hold well the front indeed. page everybody hold the front page just as we thought we were getting some kind of idea of how this was going to play out jeremy <laughs> yeah what's the time now 4 41 so uh, excuse me 7 41 so uh, you know it, 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 the sunset will be in about uh, 15, 14 15 minutes or so uh and um probably by, by well, no, this will be a full course. Should be a short caution, won't it? Because we're within 15 minutes from the previous caution period. Correct. So this will be a short yellow. So we won't be opening the pits right now. Wow, that's another major factor. So the pits will not be open now, and we will not see pit stops at this stage. So uh, you know, th th we're going to have those that need a pit a pit stop, which is pretty much everybody except for the uh, number 83 uh, and 26. Um, I think uh, this and this will help also massively the number 28 car but everybody else certainly has to make a pit stop Steve, uh, and they will have to make that under green when we go back uh, to, 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 to racing again Steve Ike for Honda America Racing Team has come into a close pick uh, I think they have a problem so that might uh, they're off the lead lap in 
TCR anyway. Six cars on the lead lap now in TCR. That's the number 33, Hyundai, the 15, Audi, the 17, Paul sitting Audi. And we've got the Mark Wilkins, 98, Hyundai, KMW, Alpha, the five car, Michael Lewis in the Elantra number one. Tyler Maxson, it, no, it's already off the lead lap with the problems for that 91 car. Earlier on at the front of the field, it is Elliot Skier that leads behind the safety car for Nola Sport in the Porsche number 47. The Corvette bringing them round at least one more time. There is a pass around going on here. And the that looks like uh, there are some takers for that. Yeah, so they're, they're all a lap down. They're, they're um, in between the safety car and their class leader, perhaps, but a, but a lap down, for it, uh, one of the TCR cars. Yeah. Um, so not not, not, not uh, hugely significant. Uh, Victor Gonzalez Racing what, Team. What is significant? Does Michael... got, sorry, Jeremy. Victor Gonzalez Racing Team have not got the pass around route at any time. Uh, and that was them taking it again. They're two for two on getting it wrong and having to spend three minutes and eight seconds or whatever it is uh, in the penalty box. So that was them going for it again. Uh, third time a charm? We'll find out. Sorry, Jeremy. No, that's, uh, that's good. So where is <laughs> the number 26 car? Has that not come round yet? Number 44 is a lap down. That's Michael Cooper. Did, Neil Verhagen's just did pitted. It, yes, Neil Verhagen did just he pitted before the yellow. He did, but did he lose a lap uh, by, by doing that song? He, was he, was he, he must have lost a lap. He must have lost a lap. Yeah, so he came in. Yeah, I mean, you do lose a lap here when you're making a pit stop, don't you? And uh, yeah, I think he's a lap down. So he's actually the number 44 car that uh, had unlapped it, uh, itself, Michael Cooper, I think he was lapped again by the leaders before we were about to caution. So he is a, he is a lap down. And I think Neil Verhagen's a lap down as well. So uh, that uh, that has not worked out for them at all. Who it has worked out for is Spencer Pumperley uh, in kind of 83. He's going to be uh, good to go from here. He's running in the 15th position, but everybody in front of him uh, will have to make a pit stop. Just check. Uh, Lazare is good in the 69 car, according to the team. Uh, Verhagen came in, yeah, just before the, just before the yellow. Yeah. So how oh, far yeah, down the field was he? It's really interesting. Well, he, he was in fourth position. So but, how has he um, lost a lap? Well, because that, that you know, it's uh, it's a short lap, a relatively short lap here. I don't know, was it? Maybe it was a long stop. At, uh... We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. He just set his personal best. Yeah, he was absolutely flying. I, I'm surprised he, 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 he maybe, I did, yeah, let's try and find out what happened there, whether it was a slightly longer stop or, I don't In know. the line, Neil Verhagen is between Robbie Foley and Robin Liddell. Right. So what I, I'm guessing what happened was, well, no, he was so close. No, he, he's, he's definitely a lap behind now. Yes, yes. The question is why. But he he pitted um, a minute and where are we? Full course yellow came out at 40:31, and he got into the pit at 39:11. So he pitted about. Um, just over a minute before the yellow came out. So the rest of the field had a full speed lap right. before the yellow came out. And that's what's, that's what's killed him. That's yeah. what's killed him. Yeah. Pace car lights are out. So the safety car, the Corvette will pull away and leave the field in the hands of Elliot Skier in the 47 Nola Sport Porsche. With now 42 minutes left on the clock. This was caused by Debris. 
So, as the points stand at the moment, I think there is a advantage to turn a motorsport with uh, the Marillo Racing AMG 80 points behind and the 71 Camaro Rebel Rock 10 points further back. Keep you an eye. Right, here we on go. That. Here we go then. 41 minutes on the clock. And once again, Elliot Skier has to do it again down towards turn one in the gathering darkness. You're going to keep, keep your eyes on what's going on on the far side of the track. As Liddell, I think, made up a, a, a position there. No, he was defending uh, from Luca Mars behind him. Uh, Robbie Foley just ahead of him in TCR. The usual scramble down to the first corner. Robert Wiggins has held on to the lead from Dupont in second. No, that's the yes, it is. Yes, it is. Dupont in second. So many blue and yellow cars out there for Rockwell Auto Development. Then it's the uh, Unitronic. Where's the Unitronic car? Yeah, that's there. Yeah, that's there. Yeah. Tim Lewis right Mark in there Hawking. as well. Yeah, and then Tim Lewis right. and then Michael Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. That's your top Lips. six, and they are all on the lead lap. So that's a proper battle in TCR among half a dozen of those cars. They're separated by 3.2 seconds as they went across the line, but basically they're lying astern. Uh, Daniel Morat's Where's taking the lead. Morat's taking the lead. Where, where is Elliot? Where He's, is in second second. Okay. He's in second. He's in second. So Morad has taken the lead for Norlis, for um, Winwood Racing, having overtaken the Norlis spot. We know that that car is very quick. That dark blue AMG very quick at the start of the run. 40 minutes to go across the line. Morad from Skier. It was down at turn seven. Skier tried to block, but Morad is, has just been outstanding on the restarts and on the brakes. He's been very incisive and decisive, Jeremy. Yeah. He's leaving. Uh, no doubt, look, I'm coming through and you're going to have to run into me. And Elliot closed that off as much as he could. That was, you know, that was pretty harsh, but fair racing on both of them. I love to see that. That was a proper, proper defence and a great pass. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. It absolutely was. It was a really good racing and that's what we're here to see. And uh, lights now, I mean, I'm sure the, the camera makes it look a bit lighter than that actually is out there right now. I mean, those the headlights are fully ablaze. And uh, this uh, final, what, 38 minutes of this race is going to be quite something. There's uh, Scott Andrews running in fourth position, struggled with that car yesterday. Still not completely happy with it, I don't think, but uh, certainly happier than he was yesterday and running in fourth position for Lone Star Racing. Now, just keep an eye on what's going on further down the field. It's just three tenths of a second between first and second, then a second between Elliot Skier and second, and Kenton Cookie third. Kenton with a little bit to do here, Lone Star Racing, and Scott Andrews is having a cracking race, as has Kenton, by the way, should say that. Scott Andrews was scored ahead of Kenton as they went across the line, and he'll try and fight back. He dropped back in behind, then goes to the outside now. Uh, Left-hand side of the track, can't get through that way around. That's fourth and fifth we're talking about then. Robbie Foley lurking in behind about a second further back. Then Robin Liddell just half a second further back. And Scott Andrews putting his fastest lap of the race in last time around, just ahead of Kenton Cook, all building up very nice indeed. West Westfall with the BMW for Carbon into the pit lane. That will be his splash of fuel to get him to the end, Jeremy. Indeed so, absolutely right. So he's uh, the first of the uh, of the major contenders here to come onto the pit lane. He's running actually down in, in 13th position. So yeah, having had that penalty a while ago for the, uh, the drive-through for the incident responsibility, he's pretty much out of contention, but uh, he's now praying for, a, for a, another caution period that'll enable him to leapfrog his way far much further up the field. Yeah, he's some half a minute now behind the leaders, but we've still got 12 cars within 10 seconds at the front of the GS field, bubbling up nicely. I'll remind my core commentators, Michelin moment 
of the race. Now, just hearing from race control that the number 17 was ordered to give the position back before the restart. So that was the Unitronic car. So when the yellow came out, there must have been some um, review. So they were scored across the line as the lead, but Jeremy, you were right as well. So we were both kind of right, because they had yes. to give the 33 of Robert Wiggins the, um, uh, the place back before the restart. So at the restart, the 33 was indeed the leader, although going into the yellow flag, they weren't. So work, <laughs> so work that one out. But that was a little switcheroo that was ordered from race control. As it stands, Robert Wiggins still leads. Mikey Taylor has dropped the position from second to third because Danny Dupont made that pass uh, just off the start. I think second lap in to the green flag run. Mark Wilton still sits in fourth for Brian Herter. 33 Hyundai from 15 Audi, from 17 Audi, from 98 Hyundai, from the black number five KMW, Alfa Romeo, Tim Lewis Jr. there, and Michael Lewis for the sixth position. And just another second or so further back in the in the Hyundai Elantra for Brian Herter Autosport. Meantime, at the front of the field, Pulling away just a little bit, even though Scott Andrews is doing very quick lap times for that car, he's not quite as quick as the two cars ahead. Daniel Morad in the lead, does a 130.3. Elliot Skier, his fastest lap of the race, 130.4. Those two very close together, and down at turn one, there's a big move on Kenton Cook from the Aston Martin from Van der Stur Racing, and Kenton Cook watched him go by, and Valentin has it close. Could not get the car pulled up, went wide, and Kenton says, you were never going to make that. I'll, thanks very much, I'll have my position back. <laughs> There's a certain sense of, of self-satisfaction when yeah. you're on the racetrack and somebody does that. It's only happened to me a couple of times, but you do have a giggle to yourself, and I bet Kenton was having a laugh there. I bet he was absolutely right. You know, he, he, he kind of goes into that and let's maintain that position. But this is a super battle as well. And you know, right in there, that's uh, Neil Verhagen. Is unfortunately a lap down. Well, Verhagen Hagen, as I call him, because I asked him uh, when he was a youngster, uh, do, you want, do you want to be known as Verhagen or Verhagen? And he said, I don't care. I said, fine. So it's Verhagen Verhagen for me since then. But whatever he calls himself, he's running, he's running a good pace. He lost a lap, unfortunately, with that pit stop. But uh, running really, really good pace there, the BMW junior team driver. Look at this battle for the lead. Elliot Ski hasn't given up, has he? He's, he's not. pressuring Daniel Morad. Very, very tight as they come on to the start finish line again. And now the uh, lights on the start finish line, just throwing a little corridor of illumination across the track from drivers left to drivers right here comes skier down the inside into turn one he's not close enough and thinks better of it daniel morad just driving his line didn't even feel the need to defend there into turn one so he's comfortable and confident on the brakes and we've seen that all the way through this race morad trying to get some redemption for the number 57 winwood racing team who've had a really weird season and uh, not the season I'm sure they were hoping for. Skier in second, Scott Andrews just there watching. Now it is a little bit defensive down into turn seven, maybe a car's width away from the edge of the track. And Skier says, thanks very much. I'm up alongside and the next is a right-hander and I'll go through into the lead. He had his nose ahead for maybe a couple of feet. Oh, then a big wow. slide on the dirt on the outside of the S's by the Nola Sport Porsche and a fantastic piece of fast hand save from Elliot Skier. Morad trying to drive his lines, but now is clearly under a lot of pressure, side by side. This is fabulous racing. Racing room being asked for and div given. And in third place, Scott Andrews has got a grandstand view of this and closes up on the two leaders, two very different lines through turn 14 onto the front straight. And Scott Andrews has got the best run of all three of them here. And if they start messing about in front, he might be able to make one or two positions. The leaders are right up to the right-hand side, almost at the pit wall. Skiing jinks across to the left-hand side of the road, tries to outbreak. Now he's got to roll off the brakes and try and get into turn two. Can't do that. He's still right there on the rear bump bumper 
This is absolutely incredible stuff. The pressure, the concentration, the skill levels involved. Big red claw of the brakes from the 47 Nola Sport. Porsche Cayman, they're still side by side through four and five, right across the curbs for both drivers. Wow. This is magnificent. This is the second full lap that they've been side by side for almost all of it. And Scott Andrews has said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to have a bit of this. I'm definitely having a bit. Now, this was the pace of the track last time between seven and eight, where the Northern Sport Porsche looked to have an advantage, but Morad has learned and just blocked past onto the inside. That was smart stuff. Now, what's the leader Daniel Morad wants is for Scott Andrews to start getting involved with that Porsche Cayman and that's exactly what is happening there side by side and the second of the AMGs for the moment has that long snout of the classic GT shape of the Mercedes ahead and he goes through in a second and that is a bit of breathing space a little bit of respite for Daniel Morad but what about that Jeremy that was outstanding two full laps of side-by-side -side racing and I don't think they touched once. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That is classic motor racing. Respect there between the two of them. That was racing really, really hard, but there, nobody did anything silly there. Just tremendous to watch and three and a half hours into this race. Yeah, we've had a couple of caution periods, but it's been like this pretty much all the way through, hasn't it? Fantastic motor race and uh, uh, Scott Andrews there taking advantage to sneak up into second place and having struggled so hard, hard yesterday, it's remarkable to see that Lone Star Racing team, AJ Peterson and the crew there, uh, have uh, got that car working a lot better today than it was yesterday. And Elliot Skier, uh, all of a sudden, is finding himself in third position now. He's got to claw his way back uh, to try and get past not one Mercedes now, but two. So Morad from Scott Andrews in second. Skier dropping back to third position. And Kenton Cook, another two and a half seconds further back. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, and Valentin has a close, closing in a little bit on Kenton Cook now as uh, as well. Edged away just a little bit from Robbie Foley on that last lap, but Foley in sixth position, that's really good for his championship aspirations. He's got Robin Liddell, however, uh, pretty close behind him. This could be the number 57, Winwood Carp, being driven back into the championship hunt before Matul Patila on weekend for Windward Racing. They're a long way back, but this is magnificent stuff from Daniel Morad. Two AMGs from the, from the Porsche in third position. Then the BMW in fourth, fifth is van der Sturz. Valentina has a claw. Then another BMW for Robbie Foley, then Robin Liddell. Just about a second and a half further back. Top 10 made up by Luca Mars for Ford. Core Motorsports. Into the pit lane for Robert McGuinness. Turner Motorsport. As he makes his final run for the splash of fuel. But the top three still very much together with under half an hour to go in TCR. Robert Wiggins, brilliant stuff. Now 2.2 seconds ahead of Denny Dupont, Mikey Taylor. Uh, still in third and still hanging on there. Just two tenths back and then there's two seconds back to Mark Wilkins who's got a second and a half on Tim Lewis. And so that's a change around, isn't it? Michael Lewis has got back to Tim Lewis. That's uh, the two Brian Herter Hyundais in fourth and fifth now and the Alpha down to sixth position. Very true. I'm going to need to lie down in a darkened room after yeah, this. We've got uh, another day of racing tomorrow, Jeremy. <laughs> well, whose idea was it to put this on on Saturday night? Yeah, exactly. Four-hour race on Saturday night. Yes. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah, and, and still pit stops still to come. And I'm surprised they're not making these pit stops uh, you know, while it's while it's still light out there. But what uh, is a replay of that fabulous side-by-side -side race here. What a save that was by Elliot Skier. Got out on the marbles a little bit through eight and nine there. And that car was just completely stepped out on him, but he kept under control. It really didn't lose him much ground either. It's a no. remarkable effort. Looks like Nola will be coming in the Nola Sport 47 car. Elliot Skier coming in in the next lap or two. Can afford absolutely no mistakes in the pit lane. And all that battling at the front of the field. 
allowed. Scott Andrews, who should be hoving into vision in third to split that battle for the lead. So it's the two AMGs, first and second. Winwood and Lone Star. Still Robert Wiggins leading in the yellow and white Hyundai, clocking up yet more cash. Being close down just to, oh, hang on a second. Mighty Taylor's back into second. Got ahead of Denny DuPont, so that's the Unitronic 17 car, back into second now. Uh, and hearing that Team TGM and Matt Plum's day going from bad to worse, they have had a left rear tyre issue. And also, right, there's been a coming together between Michael Lewis and Tim Lewis, and that position changed between the Hyundai and the Alpha. That's been looked at. But Mikey Taylor in the 17 Unitronic, the pole sitting car, as it was some three and a half hours ago, has got back into second, albeit still two and a half seconds behind Robert Wiggins, Denny DuPont, then down into third, Jeremy. Yeah, so uh, Mikey Taylor then, uh, as you say, the pole sitter uh, is going to try and uh, track down Robbie Wickens, but Wickens is just doing a super job out front there. He uh, has uh, he's leading the championship now, of course, in that car, but not yet a race win to his name this season. That is what he wants, wants to fix more than anything else, when he wants a championship more than anything else. Actually, I'm not sure whether he does want the championship more than the win, uh, because a win is certainly important to him, but... What uh, great racing there is all all up and down this field. Right, this now we're going to have to take... Vestiges, of, vestiges oh, of light, aren't there? Yeah, absolutely. The area of the circuit where the uh, you come through from turn seven through the uh, right left at nine and uh, eight and nine and then the longer right at 10 into 11, that's all very, very dark out there. The headlights having to do their job. Daniel Morad and Robin Liddell just backing away from the Turner Motorsport Robbie Foley car. Yeah, yeah, he is. I'm now, is that fuel saving? That. Is that fuel saving? Are they going to roll the dice at Rebel Rock? It's a big gamble, Jeremy. No, they can't get to the end from here, surely. Uh, I. I I mean, oh, maybe they can. Maybe they can. Yeah, maybe they can. I don't know. Came in just um, I mean, they, you don't, they, they do have remarkable... Um, Rob, Robin Liddell certainly is a master at saving fuel, no question about that. Yes. Uh, so maybe maybe they can. I don't think uh, many of the other contenders uh, can do that. But maybe he can. I'll tell you what, my hat's off to Luca Mars. Mm. And that Court cool Motorsports Ford Mustang is running right behind Robin Liddell. Uh, and just ahead of Gregory Learfuge and that Core cool Motorsports uh, Ford has kind of quietly worked its way up into contention. That car's been on, it's on, on a couple of top fives in the last uh, two races, uh, and uh, you know it's it, it's in the top ten, eighth, eighth position. But considering where they were early on, really good run for Luca Mars once again. Warning for Michael Lewis. Incident responsibility given to him for the incident that uh, changed the places for fifth and sixth in TCR with the Alpha. Just a warning. Still just half a second at the front of the field and we're in traffic now as well. Oh, and that's worked very nicely for Daniel Morad getting towards the end of the lap. The Rockwell Auto Development's TCR, nothing much they could do, to be honest. They were on the racing line through the twisty bits and that has allowed Daniel Morad to break away as he came through turn 13 into 14. Meantime, Elliot Skier goes to the outside, going down into turn one. Then he'll roll off the brake and trying to get into turn two before the AMG. And that's exactly what he does. And he's now got to hug the inside line, which he does. And he's gone back to second. But here comes the AMG, looks to the right hand side. And Scott Andrews has not given this up. A little bit wide from the Porsche. And the AMG's right there again as they go through the chicane. And on the Holman Boulevard, brilliant stuff again. This is for second and third position. And it's quite a long way back then to Robbie Foley in fourth position, some eight seconds. And Kenton Cook then as well. And where, where's Robin Liddell dropped to? He's seventh, I think, isn't 
Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's be he's behind Valentin Hasiklot. Was that was that four laps of caution then enough for these guys well, to be able to get to the end? Let's um, let's find out with Shea Adam. She's down at Rebel Rock Racing. What do you know, Shea? I just got the universal signal for first down, meaning they're just going to go to the end of this one. Not hitting <laughs> Robin Liddell again. First, first down, the ZZ what about top. Else? Well, exactly. And that's the next question, Shea. So, random vandals, Van der Stur, Turner Motorsports, are they also going to roll that dice and expect that the pace at the front of the field, which is now, you know, those top three are now eight seconds ahead, and they've been fighting really hard, Jeremy. But is that burning too much of the essential go juice? And th that's the question. Even Robbie Foley is he, he holding off. They're all doing 32s, mid to uh, early to mid 32s at the front of the field. 31.7 for Daniel Morad. 31.5 for Elliot Skier last time around when he took back second position. And at TCR, things are closing up as well as Mikey Taylor. Has he timed this just nicely as well? The 17 Unitronic Audi. Now within striking distance, almost just about a second. Well, it's not even a second. Now, as they go across the line and down into the first corner, it's half a second down into the first corner. The two white and yellow cars, the Hyundai first, and then the Unitronic machine. We know that car in second. That number 17 has got good pace. It looks like Robert Wiggins is starting to lose a little bit of grip there. His Hyundai moving around. Certainly the Audi looked a little better planted coming out of two into three. So this TCR battle's not over either. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? I mean, golly, there's, there's so much to think about this days. Plus, it's almost dark out there right now. So almost. it's, it's, it's going to be, we've still got, what, just under 20 minutes remaining. Uh, it's uh, it's going to get even a little bit darker now, isn't it? Spots of rain were. I think that was just some sort of tide they've well, been th uh, thrown around. They were yes. earlier on, and, I, and I, yeah. I sort of held my breath about 10 minutes uh, ago. And when I was watching one of the onboards, um, I, I think actually it was Robert Wiggins, and there was just a little bit on the bottom of the windscreen to the uh, right hand side of the car. And I was thinking, you're kidding me, it's not going to. Uh, come down to this, is it? But I think that's uh, okay again now. Uh, Michelin moment of the race, still thinking about that. We've got 20 minutes to go. Daniel Morad's put in a great drive, and I'm, I'm still putting, I'm still putting down his restarts. That's my moment of the race. Yeah, but uh, look, Elliot Skier's got back past. He has. The Scott yeah. Andrews, yeah. Uh, and he's closed right down on Daniel Morad. All of a sudden, he's right with him again, just two tenths of a second as they cross the line to complete lap 130. Track temperature has come down to around about 73 Fahrenheit. It was a lovely move down the inside into turn one for the lead. So Elliot Skier has gone through back into the lead just as we were talking about him. He was two tenths of a second behind as they went across the line as they came out of turn two. He was in the lead and the speed are coming together. And that's Michael Lewis and Tim Lewis and they've come together again. That's the second time the first one was investigated and the incident responsibility was put on Mike Lewis in the uh, Michael Lewis in the number one, but he was not given a penalty. It was just a warning. And now the Alpha is steaming at the side of the road. This is big. This is big. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is awful. This is, and this is going to be with 18 minutes to go, unless that Alpha gets going. We're going to get a, another full course yellow. It was side by side. Ah, something broke. Something broke on the Alpha. They'd gone round turn one and turn two together, and then there was a sharp movement to the left. That wasn't that wasn't driver. That was something that had broke. So maybe there was a little rub before that, or even in the earlier incident that Michael Lewis was warned for. To me, that looked like a breakage. They were side by side, big slide from the Alpha, and then you bang, and it's full course yellow. And who got into the pits? Christian Simchak got into the pits just before the full course yellow. But surely, Jeremy, this is going to allow everyone who was query 
short on fuel. That's, this is massive for people like Robin Liddell and, and Forley uh, and Kenton Cook. Well, everybody, yeah. And, and everybody behind those oh, yeah. the leaders. Shit, Adam, what had the other teams told you before that yellow came out? Van der Schur Racing said, can we make it? We don't know. Are we going to pit? Again, we don't know. Turner said, no, we can't make it on fuel. This is our championship car. We're going to leave him out there, but we're not going to risk it at the end of the race. I uh, got wow. down to random vandals. Let me just dive in really quick with Paul Sparta. But Windward, we're on the wall with the fuel hose over the guy's shoulder ready to get Daniel Morad in here. Nola Sport were kind of at the point where they said, you know what, we've gotten this far, let's just send it and see what happens. Uh, that's the ultimate reward. Let's see. Hey, Colin. Colin, were they gonna be okay on fuel without this yellow, or did they need to pit? Oh no, big eyes from Colin with BMW on that one. Random Vandals needed this yellow too. Okay, really interesting. I mean, it's, it's the people who've got the most fuel still have the advantage, Jeremy, because it's running full rich after the restart, isn't it? So th th this is still not cut and dried. Uh, far from it. Absolutely far from it. And uh, good gracious. I mean, um, you, you hate to see a yellow this late into it. True. Um, from, from one perspective, but from another, I suppose it does make it more interesting. But uh, I, I was... I'm still curious to, you know, how they managed to stretch out this fuel. I mean, you know, we've seen cars go almost an hour before. We went green, um, well, we've had another caution. Well, we went green with an hour to go, basically. Yeah. Uh, with 106 laps in. Then there was another short full course caution thereafter. That was the debris for the, uh, the Ford that was on the front straight. But at that stage, with an hour to go, and they've all made their pit stops five or six laps earlier under caution period, I don't see any way that the uh, the GS cars can get to the end. Potentially, that 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 four laps of yellow could save it and, and make it possible. And certainly, that's what some of the teams seem to be gambling on. I'm surprised there are that many people gambling on that. But uh, look, a win here is important, and track position is important. And you're going to do everything you can to try and make sure at the lead of this race in what uh, 14 and a half minutes time from now. Great work by the track services. We've got the Alpha Under Tour with a, a lift tour on the front. Shea has been doing a little more investigation, particularly down at fourth place. BMW Random Vandals Racing. Great name for a team, by the way. Isn't it? Their mascots are raccoons too, so we gotta love them. Um, Paul Sparta told me that they were only four liters short on fuel, which is basically a lap and a half. So this yellow will be allow them to not only get to the end, but to tell Kenton Cook, go for it, son. Uh, Paul Sparta, a big <laughs> FSU Seminoles fan, and uh, FSU has been doing pretty well too this year. Well, this is really gonna be uh, an absolute drag them down, knock them out straight fight on the infield road course at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're moving into the last dozen minutes or so of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway 240 for the Michelin Pilot Challenge. This is going to be a cracker, an absolute cracker. Here's how they stand. Elliot Skier and Daniel Morad lead, uh, and they've been having a great battle along with Scott Andrew, but they have been uh, burning fuel. Is this enough for them as well? Or have they been burning too much fuel? There were six, seven seconds ahead of the rest of the field, remember. Everybody had backed off a little bit. Kent Cook up into fourth for the Random Vandals Racing BMW. Then Valentin has a claw for Van der Stur Racing, the number 19 blue and white car. Then Robbie Forley for Turner Motorsport, the BMW. Stephen Cameron, the similar car. That's Cameron Racing for Gregory Leofuge uh, in the 43. Then Robin Liddell in eighth. He was certainly saving fuel before the yellow came out. Luke and Mars for Core Motorsport, Ford in ninth and tenth. Spencer Pumpelli. But you've got a lot of people. And don't forget, Jesse Lazare splashed for fuel. So he's he's actually splashed. And I think uh, I, I think Valentin Hazekloth did as well, actually. Uh, Jesse uh, Lazare, Spencer Pumpelli uh, definitely uh, stopped as well for BGP. And I think Stephen McAleer did. Yes, he did. Now, they're 10th, uh, 11th and 12th at the moment. But if they've got fuel to burn, and I, I literally mean that, they can go full rich to the end. And 
all three of those drivers in cars that we know are competitive, the 718 GT4 RS Cayman and the Mia McLaren, all three of those drivers, I'll put money on that they don't finish 10th, 11th and 12th, Jeremy, by the end of this race. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm fair, not going to say where they comment. will finish, but I bet no. they don't finish there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very unlikely, I would suggest. And, uh, to this is, this is going to get, yeah, we're going back to green this time. Uh, it's virtually dark out there now, so uh, the, the marshals are going to be really paying attention on these corner, corner stations. So Elliot Skier brings them back to green, and it's a great restart by the AMG in second. We know how good Daniel Morad is. The whole pit, st pit straight is bathed in the green light from the, t uh, the timing tower at the exit of turn 14. Down the outside, oh, massive cut back to the inside from Morad in this contact. And that's going to be damage, I think, to the left front of Morad's car. He almost got it done, but not quite. He's tried that a couple of times before, and he's going to drop back in further down. But contact for those two at the front of the field. Where has Morad cycled back into in TCR? It's the same kind of carnage. And through to the lead, the Unitronic number 17, Mikey Taylor. I'm saying this, anything could be happening in the dark, to be honest. You're just going to have to believe me uh, when yeah. I say this. He, be he was actually scored in the lead. Uh, across the line. Across the line, yeah. By point zero six six and Denny Dupont. Andrews to the lead. Zero eight four. Andrews, Scott Andrews, I think, to the lead. Uh, it's definitely one of the AMGs. Uh, no, it's not. It's Daniel Morad's back to the lead. It's yeah. Daniel Morad back to the lead. So even taking the cut through, he's got the run through turn three and he's made that work. So Morad back to the lead. They're coming on to the final couple of corners. There's skier down the inside and retakes the lead. And up into fourth play. Who was that that was coming through from way back? Uh, McAlee is coming through. McAlee is coming through and Robbie Foley's there. Kenton Cook's in there as well. This is absolutely incredible. We've got the top 10, 12 cars still battling for the lead. Skier has it at the moment, and it's beginning to break out behind them. All kinds of carnage potentially here. Another inside dive into turn one. That's a, again a bit sketchy, but that is Scott Andrews on, I think, Kenton Cook in the random Vandals car. Yes, it was, and looks to me as though the BMW has held onto that. I'm looking at shapes of cars and nothing else at the moment. Valentin has a Colossus right in there as well as Robbie Foley. And all we can do is tell you the rough shapes of the cars in T TCR. It's Robert Wiggins uh, has been displaced by Mikey Taylor. And oh, he has, he's got it back again, has, I think, hasn't he? Uh, has it changed again? It's changed again, Jeremy. OK. <laughs> Mikey's out as front. As came across the line, Wickens was ahead, but uh, Mikey Taylor's made it through again. <laughs> right, I, I have conflicting uh, information on the screen for the <laughs> the incident that caused the final, uh, the last yellow. Uh, it's a penalty for both the five and the one. So both the Alpha and fifth place, Michael Lewis, are getting a drive through. The Alpha is out, so it doesn't make any difference. My goodness me, it's all kicking off here. And Robert Wiggins uh, with a front row seat of the number 17 car uh, trying to... Oh, in fact, there was, there was a coming together. Ah, that was that's, the 17. That was the 17. And that was trying to pass a GS car. So that, I think, was one of the... I think that was one of the Fords. So I'm guessing... That would have been the Ford Mustang, maybe, of Drew. No, that's, that's been off for a wee while, hasn't it? So, not sure which one of the GS cars that was out in the darkness. That was a turn 14. It was the 79 car. It was the 79. So it was, uh, it was the uh, NV Autosport car. I should have gone with it, the blue car. So that car's been in an incident with the leader of the TCR. So it's now Robert Wiggins by nearly two seconds on Mikey Taylor. And Dennis Dupont is up, oh, he's still in third with Mark Wilkins in fourth. So that's all changed around out in the darkness. We've still got seven and a half minutes left. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, and it's hard to see anything out there, isn't it? But uh, Elliot Skier is, uh, I think, out in the lead, still in that little Porsche. Yeah, it is, you can see that uh, Yellow and black guys uh, made his way back to the front here 
He just couldn't try and hold on, but what a race this has been. Big stopping, uh, big red stoppers on the front of that uh, Porsche. And it's a six tenths of a second, which in the context of what we've seen is actually a decent cushion. At least it was the last time he came across the line. And for once, we may not have a pass for the lead down into turn one. However, further back, two cars right on the pit wall for fifth and sixth. That's Valentin has a clock and, and uh, Robbie Forley's gone through. Forley has gone through and into fifth position. And... Uh, just oh no, sorry. That apologies. That's the, a different BMW. That was Kent Cl uh, Co uh, yeah. Co Kent Cook and yeah. uh, Hasselflo. Just, Klo. just staying ahead. Of yes, that correct. Klo. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. I'm just picking shapes of cars at the yeah, moment, well, Jeremy. Is it possible? Is uh, it possible? And headlight shapes as well. And wow, man, this is just incredible. And what about the run to the front of the field from? Robert Wiggins, he's had to fight for this. He's got 1.6 seconds over what was the pole sitting car. Mighty Taylor will be absolutely incandescent with rage that he got taken out by Drew Daubart, no by it, uh, and the Envy Autosport Mustang. Yeah, but he's still only about a second or so behind. Yeah, that's a it's lifetime, not over. It? It's not over, GCR. Jeremy. Six minutes to go. And he's there again, actually. He's within about three or four cars lengths. That's, that's nowhere near. A second and a half now. Here comes the battle for the lead. They're together yeah. through the S's and back out onto the darker part of the circuit at the turn one and two end of the speedway. Little patches of light as they come down into the braking area. At turn 12, now into 13. Flashing of the lights by Mikey Taylor. This might, this might yet come down to a big dive in one of the braking areas. Five minutes to go. Shea Adam, what's your Michelin moment of the race for GS? Elliot Skier, period. Battling with okay. everybody who got around him. And it's still not over yet because they are up on the wall for Nola Sport with the field nozzle over the shoulder. No way. No way. Here comes an outside, inside pass opportunity for Mighty Taylor. They've had an up and down race as well. And at the moment from pole position, they got knocked back in the early running down to the latter part of the top 10. They've come back and fought to lead the race. This is incredible stuff. Uh, share your TCR moment of the race. Assuming nothing happens, which is uh, a silly assumption I, to me. I, yeah, no, I think we are watching it right now. <laughs> Whoever comes out on top in this battle. Okay, that seems reasonable. Jeremy, how, how, how are you feeling in GS and, and TCR for your mission and moments of the race? Well, the, the moments of the race might, might have been uh, Scott Andrews going through the escape route at turn one and not losing any time. But frankly, I think that's ridiculous. Uh, and so, yeah, Elliot Skier is my vote there. He's just driven brilliantly. He and Ad Adam oh. Adelson have uh, done a, a, an absolutely perfect uh, job in his race, come oh. on May, whether they win or not. Uh, and it might not be over at the end of the race because race control are saying further penalties may be assessed post-race. After further review, they're giving themselves some thinking time. And I don't and think a that's a, a bad thing. And there's the change at the front of the field. My moment of the race, Daniel Morad and his outside passes. He's pulled them off time and time again. And his restarts have been outstanding. I'd like to give it to Daniel Morad and Elliot Skier for driving side by side for two laps. But we can't give it to two drivers. But that was a very long moment of the race, but a moment of the race for me as well. Now, the TCR battle's not over either. There was a moment that was side by side into turn one. The yellow and white Hyundai, the yellow, white and black of the Unitronics Audi. I, 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 I cannot take this. It, it's just extraordinary <laughs> stuff. Uh, drive through, is that for somebody, anybody important? No, that's for Nick Schaefer. That was a false start. That's fine. So that hasn't affected any of the major positions. Mikey Taylor still on the flash. It tries to come round the outside at seven. He'll be on the inside for eight. He might be able to make this work, you know. He's still there. He's still there. He's nosed ahead. He's gone into the lead. But then it's a, the, the next corner is a left-hander. But now it's the right-hander and he's gone through. He's gone 
through with two laps to go, but Robert Wiggins is not giving this up. He's taking a higher line as they sweep through the right-hander, now under braking. Oh my goodness, mate. Down into the infield again. That was turned 12, now 13. Very different lines being taken by these two cars at the front of the race. That might just have stolen the moment of the race. Oh, there's, there's a, still a car off on the left. That is the uh, the Mustang, isn't it? Of course, we're leaving that there. It's well off. Well, they've had a race, long battle. Two to go across the line. And Daniel Morad by half a second. They'll come round to the white flag this time around. What a great pass again by Daniel Morad. There was a bit of a bump as he went through. He's been pretty decisive, pretty aggressive. Two laps to go. One at the end of this one. My goodness me, what a race. What a race and the championships start doing the arithmetic. Uh, but you better be doing it in pencil if you are, because this could still all change. Did the, Mo did the Nola Motorsports car just... Yeah, I think that's the Nola Motorsports into car. The pit lane. Into the pit lane. So there is a splash of fuel. There's a splash of fuel required for the Nola car. And they're not ready for him. They were. And this is going on to the final lap. They have literally come up two and a half miles short. And that's Scott Andrews into second. Ken Cook into third. Robert Liddell, by the way, has worked his way through traffic and once again timed it perfectly. He's only two and a half seconds off the podium here in another brilliant fuel-saving race for Rebel Rock Racing. And that keeps their championship alive as well. This is massive. Onto the final lap for the TCR cars. And poor Elliot Skier for Nola Sport, dropping way down outside the top 10 for literally two and a half miles worth of fuel. Uh, the whole car, and also actually, I've just noticed as well that the uh, Van der Stur Racing Aston has dropped way yeah. back after being up. At, and, and, and again, I presume that's a massive fuel save or. They haven't made another pit stop, have they? No, that was about four or five laps ago. All of a sudden, he lost a lot of ground. Uh, he must have had a maybe a coming together, I think, possibly with Robbie Foley, one of the BMWs, either Robbie Foley or, or and or Kenton Cook. What? That was about f five laps ago. What a run it's been for Winwood Racing. Bryce Ward eased off the track on the first lap, kept his head four back. Daniel Morad has fought at every restart at every single step of the way, and he'll win by just on half a second. What a brilliant race, and win would take it ahead of Lone Star with random vandals in third, and Robin Liddell just 1.6 seconds. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic stuff. Waiting for the TCRs to come through as well. Mikey Taylor was only three quarters of a second ahead of Robert Wiggins the last time we look, but here he comes, he's got enough. He's going to go through. That's been a race on second half of the race as well. Oh my goodness, brilliant stuff. Let's go down to Winwood Racing, Shea Adam. <laughs> Bryce Ward is literally collaring all of his crew guys to take a picture to celebrate this moment because they are victorious at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is fantastic. Bryce, how hard was it to keep calm after that opening lap incident? I mean, honestly, we knew the car was good. It was such a shame that I got punted out, but man, I just buckled down and, and the guys were like, just keep your, hit your marks, do what you do. And I mean, I think I brought it from last to 13th and then the pit crew, what a job. What, I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a team sport, man.
you know, from 13th to 7th, and then Daniel just drove it to the front. And I mean, it was such a real. I can't believe we actually won it. Honestly, the, I thought the Porsche had the. I thought the Porsche really had the fuel to do it because he looked like he was running long enough each time. But Daniel was saving and saving and saving, and he couldn't keep the guys behind trying to save. It's like, okay, well, whatever. It is what it is. Maybe we'll just settle for a third if we. But then the full course yellow really helped us out. And oh my gosh. I am just so thrilled, I'm so thrilled. You have earned the right to kiss the bricks, Bryce. That is quite an honor. <laughs> Those babies. <laughs> Congratulations. Absolutely. Oh, that was brilliant. And he's right, actually, that was a great first stint from last up to 13th. He kept his head and Daniel Morad did the closest job. He fought his way to the front about five times, Jeremy. And, and that was just on the restart. Brilliant stuff. Uh, and that is very interesting for the championship uh, in terms yeah. of uh, what's gone on here, particularly with Rebel Rock Racing fighting his way. Robin Liddell sitting just outside the top 10 and then restarted just inside the top 10. Comes home in fourth Turner position. Motorsport. Turner, Turner Motorsport, Motorsport in fifth uh, position. Do they take the lead in the championship now? Yes, they do. 22.30 22 points to the 21.70 of Frank Depew and Robin Liddell. 21.60 of Kenny Marillo and... and, uh, and uh, Christian Shimjak, who finished in the 13th position, actually made up a few places on the last few laps, but because uh, they, that, that was one of the cars that came in for a splash right before that final caution period. But uh, what a motor race that was, and goodness gracious, I mean, hats off to everybody involved because there was some brilliant motor racing going on there for the last four hours. <laughs> Uh, our TCR Michelin moment of the race. Uh, it was a fabulous battle between Robert Wiggins and Mikey Taylor, and we're going to give it to Mikey Taylor for the final pass for the lead. Frankly, there's about 20 moments of the race in each yeah. of the categories. Uh, final yeah. thoughts for moment of the race in GS, Jeremy? Um, yeah, I... I Anybody. <laughs> I don't find I'll vote for anybody. Whatever the consensus is, I'll go with it because there were so many great moments in that in that race. Um, I mean, yeah, Daniel Morris passes were impressive. Uh, Elliot Skiers, he pulled some outside outside passes as well. Look, I, I'm going to say, you know, anybody would deserve it, and and I think uh, for the Nola Sport team, that you know, that's not one of the heralded teams in this series. Yet, well, I mean, they've been around and knocking on the door and had some success in the past. But uh, for me, I I'm going to stick with my call from earlier on, with number yeah. 47 team, just because they've, uh, they, they, yeah, that's my vote for right now. But gosh, what a motor race! That and, was fun. and Shea had the same thought. Elliot's gave for everything that he did, and actually, that side by side racing with Daniel Morad as well brilliant. was brilliant from both of them. Honourable mention to Winwood and Daniel Morad. They've taken the victory. We'll give the uh, moment of the race to Nola Sports' Elliot Skier for that exceptional racing uh, and really clean racing all the way through yeah. uh, as well. Shea Adam is down in the pit lane with TCR winners. Chris Miller, you are a Windy at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. How good does this feel? feels so good it was it was so intense honestly and the guys just executed all weekend we had a fast car to do it at this special place I mean you can see it on all of our faces it means a little bit more and uh, given the championship I mean we know we got to win the last two races or at least beat the 33 so one down and we know they'll be tough in Atlanta but we we did the first step and now we got to take our momentum and and just keep executing when we get to Petit. You just got to keep getting pulls. Every time you get a pull, you win the race. Yeah, this one was tough. We had a little issue early on that sent us to the back and kind of battled back throughout the rest of the day. But our pit stops were perfect and just a really good overall team effort. And honestly, Mikey's had some great drives this year, but I think this might be his standout best one. So huge credit to him to get it done. And yeah, just got to keep our heads down and try to go win this championship. Oh, congrats to you guys and the whole family. Appreciate it. Thanks. And Shea, Adam, you talked about this uh, before the race started, but not only does Bryce Ward get to kiss the bricks, he gets to see the Tecumets 57 First Horizon uh, AMG GT4 up on the coveted winner's circle, the victory circle, up on the lift and in front of the Tarak.com battle on the bricks backdrop 
What a moment for Bryce Ward uh, and the rest of the team. And Jerry, we're talking about the point situation in GS. It's closed up in TCR as well. Oh man, uh, we heard there from uh, Chris Miller saying he, they had to beat the number 33 car to win the championship. Well, uh, they did that today. And the gap now between Harry Gottsacker and Robin Wickens, who still lead uh, back to Chris Miller and Mikey Taylor, is 20 points. Uh, the, the, the gap between first and second is 30. So the gap was 50, it's now 20. Basically, whoever finishes ahead of these two in the first three positions next time out will win the championship. Wow. And, uh, yeah, what a battle that has been all the way through. A brilliant comeback there for Mikey Taylor. But, boy, you've got to feel for Harry Gottsacker and Robbie Wickens. I mean, what a race they drove. Uh, second place again. That's got to be really irritating. That's six second places. But, hey, who's got to, who's not going to be thrilled with six second places in one season? And still leading uh, so, the championship. Uh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. And But uh, it, that won't be if... Mikey Taylor and Chris Miller win again next time. Another second place will not be enough for that number 33 team. Jeremy could go down to who takes pole position at Petit Le Bon. Let's no, there's no, po there's oh, no there's points. points. There's, there's no, no points. points. No, 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 there's no points. In, in Sorry, Park, yeah, of course. It's way few. too complicated. Few. Few. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> few. Oh, I don't even know where we begin. If you no. are, uh, if you are writing a race report on this, where are you going to begin? Uh, you've got a thousand words. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Absolutely outstanding. Let's uh, give you once again unofficial results here with potential penalties that could affect some of these positions being assessed post race. But the top three uh, at GS Winwood Racing for Daniel Morad and for Bryce Ward. Brilliant stuff, followed home by Lone Star Racing, just half a second at the line, and then a great second stint in the race for Kenton Cook, bringing the random Val Vandals BMW up into third. How about Robin Liddell, Andrew Davis, and Frank Depew? Again, right there, their momentum didn't give them the third win, but they are still there and still in with the championship shout. Just uh, ahead of Turner Motorsport this weekend, but Turner Motorsport go to the head of the field with a 96 car because of the lowly result from Murillo Racing. Uh, we heard Kenny Murillo being a, a little bit morose at the start. Well, unfortunately, that's how it's paid off. 13th position for them, and they have ceded the lead uh, and indeed second place to in the championship uh, to uh, Turner Motorsport for the lead and second place for Rebel Rock Racing. That's going down to the wire uh, at Matul Petit Le Mans. In TCR, again, these are uh, unofficial results at the moment. It's Unitronic from Paul to the win. Piece of cake, eh? Well, there was plenty <laughs> went on in between those two things. Uh, Brian Hurd at Autosport to fill the other two podium positions with the 33 with their sixth second place finish of the season 98 in third place just off the podium for Rockwell Denny Dupont finishing that went that off and then the RG Bargy down uh, in fifth and sixth uh, with Michael Lewis going to get at least two penalties at the end of that because uh, he didn't serve his penalty uh, Tyler Maxson uh, and Van der Stur racing the 91 car finishes in sixth position in TCR. Well, that's it. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. Time for us to go and lie down. For... No, we're back tomorrow. So make sure that you tune back in again. Shay Adam was down in the pit lane for us. Jeremy Sean, John Hindoff in the booth. Uh, my thanks to Chris and Alan, who have worked so hard on the public address system for the last couple of days and be with us again tomorrow. Uh, and of course, to all of our technical staff here at the track, particularly our very hard working camera operators who has uh, who have put in a shift and a half today uh, and thanks to Aaron and Keith and uh, Alex and everybody at uh, Charlotte at NASCAR Productions who've made sure that we've seen the pictures as of you around the world it's been Rob and Tim in London and what a way to finish off the responsible adult's birthday. Uh, Eve Hewitt was the one who put it all together as our project manager. I'm John Hindoff. Thank you for being with us on our Super Saturday. Join us for the big one tomorrow. It is the Tyrac.com WeatherTech race here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Plus, we've got Lamborghinis and Porsches as well. Make sure you don't miss a moment of it on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Have a good Saturday night. Bye-bye. 
This programme is a Radio Show Limited production. For more, check imsaradio.com and subscribe to IMSA Radio wherever you get your podcasts.